the 1998 elimination final. Port Adelaide and Central. They've met eight times in the finals in the last five years with the Bulldogs having a very poor record today. The loser is all over in 98. And there have been some changes. Morgan goes to ground. The opening is always important. Joining us in commentary, Ken Sheldon and Mark Naley. Ken, a big match for both these teams. Only one can go forward. Yes, and a big move too for Brett Chalmers playing at full forward in the absence of Scott Hodges, it looks like. So a big blow there for the Magpies, but the opportunity for Chalmers to prove himself. Tregenza to Smith, who seems to have Hicks picking him up. Vines kicked the ball off the ground, just driving it forward. Geister got manhandled, dragged off the ball. McGowan, their star of the last six weeks, hasn't he been extraordinary? Gives it out to Huey Rymers, who seems a lot more comfortable. Deep in defence, and now it's Hopwood, who played so very well last week for the Bulldogs. Young Hopwood, keen to get the ball moving quickly. Does over the top there to Cassidy. The ball has come back. Just looking at it, Mark, the Bulldogs have really started ferociously. Yes, both sides. Magpies as well. Just showing a little bit of physical presence. Good mark there by Lees. He'll just settle things down. Brian Lees onto his right boot. Gets it long down the wing. The pack forms. Good spoil from behind. At ground limit again was Cotter. Just receiving a little bit of attention there. Number seven for the Magpies, Peter Burgoyne. Umpire will throw it in. Brett Daniel has the job on Burgoyne. A player that could really tear this Bulldog defence apart. Jakes and Moller, two of the young guns of the SNFL. Ruckwell, Borlais, their skipper. Handballs it out, looked like a Russell Evert handball. That one just thumped it away. Just on that with uh, Daniel, has his left leg strapped from a hamstring problem, but that's a really good matchup, I believe. Daniel is very much an underrated player and I think a terrific young defender. Port Adelaide bench there, plenty of experience. Moller and Jakes again. Dead heat that one. Danny Holm, the best and fairest from last year, thumps at the ground. Polton had an attack of uh, finals nerves and three grabbed it, and in doing so, he's been bundled across the line and out of play. A free kick to the Bulldogs. The umpire said uh, held too long. In fact, he dropped it. And the Bulldogs take the free. Hotwood, Jew, what an important player he is. Playing off halfback today. Left footer, chips it forward. Inspirational stuff. Steinborner, the two young guns combined. The Bulldogs, they've never won an elimination final, but they get the first goal today. Gee, the signs are looking good, though, David. They really have started with a tremendous amount of really happening for the Bulldogs and there was a mistake out on centre wing there from Jared Poulton as he did as was called he did fumble it and then was kick it out in the forward but the use of the ball by Stuart Dew coming into half forward was terrific and the run the run from centre wing from Steinbrenner finishing with the goal all good signs for the Bulldogs Great start. Central's lead by a goal. We played just over three minutes into the first quarter. The elimination final. Big Jakes up against Radley Moller. The towering men of the SNFL competition. Jakes backhands the ball forward. Chance for Mad Dog Morgan onto his left boot. Brings it around. Just goes past Burgoyne. Good pick up by Daniel. Goes back further afield. This is Swert. Swert sees himself. Good Shepard will block there by Brown. Takes on Hicks. The ball comes to ground level over the top. The ball goes towards goal from Vines. Unfortunately, he wasn't quite straight enough and brings up the first score, but a behind to the Magpies. There's a switch of play from Swerp, just not up to scratch. And the Magpies not able to make the most of a failed opportunity. Guys still playing at fullback today, goes long and wide. Penetrating kick, Alfie Steed gathers it, but Holm gathered him in. Morgan gets the handball out to Borlase, who's claimed by Cook and Holm. It's two on one out there, and the Bulldogs have the numbers at the ball. Very evident early, I think, David, just the way that they're going about it today. Terrific signs for the Bulldogs. Darrell Ball lays six flags under his belt. Another finals attempt this time as the skipper and coming from fourth position. Burgoyne bustles. Daniel. Daniel did very well. Gathered the ball between the legs like a basketballer. Out to Moller. Now it's Cook. They're running it well from defence and playing direct football, the Bulldogs. They've been indirect in recent weeks. Today they're going straight down the middle. Lures and Lees is a good battle. Lures got the handball away, but Polton, presence of mind, relieves the pressure for the Port Adelaide defence to Tregenza. Comes wide. Tregenza takes it. Handball's over the top. Has the running ball ace. It wasn't ball ace, the player in question. Coming over the top again. 
You see the player is very keen, very desperate to get hold of his football. Jew comes up with it, spots the player forward, just couldn't control the kick and finds Carter. Carla qu quickly onto his left leg, goes wide to try to find Ambrose. He finds him. Ambrose sees Morgan in the middle of the ground, heads that direction. Quick handball onto Fiegert. Fiegert brings it inboard, finds Lees. It goes back to Bamford. Bamford sets it up now. Hodges comes out full of steam. Chalmers is there. Ball comes to ground. Brown really takes it. Pops out the squirt. In a game there is Beaky. Quick hands over the top. Plenty of pressure applied by both sides. It should be cleared by Cassidy. Cashley's kick is way with Tregenza. He was a chance for the Crows today, but lining up for the Port Adelaide Magpies in the elimination final. It's David Morgan, wide charm, used his body beautifully. Just edged out to Geister with the rear end and held a beautiful one-handed mark. Yes, the gap was there. Chalmers had ran back hard into the space. Morgan was good enough to pick him out, but the mistake there, a double one really by the Bulldogs. I thought at half forward, in the previous play, Stewie Jew perhaps would have been better suited to handball, to cook. He elected to kick to two magpies. They then switch play all the way down, holding possession. Give it back to the Bulldogs, but again, a mistake in disposal sees Chalmers line up for goal. 98 goal games for Chalmers and 30 goals. It's unusual, isn't it? He knows how to kick a goal, but he hasn't kicked a lot of them. But he gets the first before today. Good sign, though, there. Good confidence builder for the big fellow. You run up your sleeve, isn't it, when you think that you can put him in the ruck at any stage and he can be as good as, if not better, than any ruckman in this competition. Well, physically, kid, he's uh, just superior to almost any other big man, but hasn't made the next step yet. One point margin favours the Magpies. Plenty of work in the middle. Ball lace on McGow on McGowan there and screen. Two of the better players in the competition. Good bounce by the umpire. Well, this time gets the advantage. Good second effort. Dragenza comes across and takes it off the pack. Kicks the ball up forward. Great courage there shown by Hicks. Comes out Burgoy. Quick hands across the Vines. Vine goes in. He's pushed in the back as he kicks it. Charms is up there. And the ball hits the post. An exciting youngster, Vines. He moves very well, well balanced. Two points to Vines. Guys to go short. That won't be the game plan today, but he's picked out Daniel. Just 25 metres around from the Port Adelaide goals. Daniel goes along the boundary line. Darren Smith playing at centre half forward. Off hands to Brown. Now ball lays. Back under it was Daniel, but uh, Brett Chalmers. Geist to battle it out. Geister was good enough to force it forward. Hicks got a boot to the ball, and what has he done? He's just forced it out of play. Good pressure. Brett Chalmers on screen will do the ruck work, uh, you would suppose, in the Port Adelaide forward line. Good Port Adelaide crowd, as there always is finals time. But it's Jakes who drops back to do the ruck work. Moller. Jakes again, dead heat on that one, but the umpire's seen an infringement, and Big Radley will take the free. Radley Moller. 19th game, puts it onto his left leg and drives it long. Couldn't quite be taken there. Coming through is Morgan again. Quick handball at ground level. Good work by Carter across to Brown. Brown is taken on again. Couldn't quite get the ball out. It falls out now to Smith. Goes back to Vergenza. What can Vergenza do? Lifts his eyes. Has the vision to see Chalmers moving out. Didn't quite find Chalmers. Back to Bamford. Bamford backs himself and goes for the top of the goals. Couldn't quite control it. And brings up another behind. So 1 3 9. Play central, just one goal. Bamford started it in the midfield, changing into the forward pocket with Steed. Cotter playing on the wing, takes the loose ball from defence. Now it's Steinberner running down. Darren Smith has had to chase him. What a good effort by Smith just to apply enough pressure to allow the ball to go wide and Lees to get a hand to it and force it across the line. But Darren Smith in defence was doing the tough work. Ryan Lees, what a battle he'll have today on Simon Lures. I think that battle will go a long way to deciding the winner today. Lees has been in extraordinarily good form. Lures, on the other hand, has missed a couple with suspension. And you just suspect might lack a little bit of fitness when it really hots up in the finals. They get over today. Plenty of time to get that right, though, David. September is the time to be 
in form. Ball thrown in. Jake's again just too strong for Moller. Gets the ball forward. It's taken by Burgoyne. Just fakes the handball. Goes back over his mark. Just trying to keep possession at the moment as Burgoyne. Looks forward for a little bit of movement. He has Binky moving out wide. He goes in that direction. Behind will be Swerton. Will apply the spoil. Good work by Binky in front. Lots to get the ball moving quickly as Morgan running past. Binky goes back, turns and kicks forward. Again, Chalmers uses his strength the ground level. Cassidy's taken beautifully from behind. Umpire calls play on. Comes back a chance here for the Magpies through ball ace. Back to Morgan, around his body, heads towards goal. Hasn't made the distance. It wasn't Morgan, the player it was Alfred Steed. Oh, it is hot out there and pressure. There's a lot of mental pressure as well, Ken. No doubt. There's a lot hinging on this. Both teams have had to make a lot of changes with the AFL, SNFL system the way it is. There's many players have been up and down all seasons. Injury, of course, play a big part as they do in any team, but Central District have been very unsettled all year, and this would have to be one of the best teams that they have put on the deck. I think they look better with McGowan back in the middle, no question about that. Uh, Cotter handles it out of play. We are 11 minutes into the first quarter of the elimination final. It's a three-point ball game with Port Adelaide holding a slender lead. Wait for the umpire to throw the ball back in. Again, we'll see Moller up against Jakes. Vinky and Swert. Great matchups out here this afternoon. Steinberner on Jagenza. That's been one worth just waiting for the season. Coming down was Hicks. Hotly pursued there by Borlase. Second effort by Hicks was good. Tackled there by Brown. As we see the umpire again come in. Ball up. Borlase just getting a little bit of attention. The shoulder. Probably Central's players. Look at the shoulder, Mark. Well, it's been heavily strapped for most of the season. I see the Port Adelaide players are wearing black amber armbands this afternoon. Danny Holm on Brown. Another good contest. Worth watching. Lines again, just there with Cotter. Just quite prepared to see the ball out over the line. Vines has been important early, finding plenty of the ball, as has Trakenza. Vines has two points. Moller and Jakes. Moller wins it, thumps it down. Holm flicked it further afield. Bustling through was Cotter. I like the way he's going about it today. But Fiegert was run out of play, just ran out of space. And the boundary umpire will bring it back in. Very big crowd building here at Football Park. The breeze favouring the end to which Port Adelaide are kicking. Perhaps a couple of goals. Moller aggressively. Jakes got it back, thumped it to further afield. Now this is uh, suiting Central, Ken. With Port Adelaide having the breeze, they're playing the boundary line. And Forsyth just slowing down the tempo. Well, they need to find their feet, as we did talk about. They've been a very much an unsettled side all year. There's no doubt that they have the vigour here today. They've started off in a tremendous fashion. Got a good start. They have to just settle themselves and get a bit of synergy with each other. Chance again, a mistake made. Across the half-back line. The handball across from Brown was perfect to Smith. Smith on his left leg goes in. He's happy with the kick. The Magpies army are out in force. They're also happy with the result. Another goal for the Magpies. What a brilliant build-up from the, the dead side of the ground. Just fantastic the way that they brought the ball across into the centre corridor with quick hands, good run. Always running inboard to the middle corridor to open up the goal face. And Darren Smith with his huge and vast experience putting through an excellent left foot goal. 492 goals to D Smith. You can see him kicking 500 if Port Adelaide can go on in the finals. As we go back to Moller in the middle, who wins the tap. Polton from defence drives Port Adelaide forward, and it's Darren Smith at centre half forward again. He's playing like a young man, the veteran. On the left boot, grubbers one forward. Daniel around the corner and under pressure. It's out of bounds on the full. There's no easy kicks in a game such as this. Brown, short to Bamford, the two Rovers combining. Now Bamford's about 80 metres out, looks for the lead. Chalmers sets off from the goal square. The ball heads in that direction. Geister manhandles him, bodies him. Back comes Binky, couldn't quite get there. Going to ground and doing the hard work was Cassily, and it stacks on the mill, fellas. We'll have a bounce. Interesting move here. Stewie Dew went in for the last centre bounce. McGowan dropped up to the flank. Now they've interchanged again, and Carter is unaware of where his player is. Dew is alone at half forward. 
his opponent is 70, 80 metres away. Just waking up to it now. Yeah, the runner's gone out to let him know. Ken well picked up. Had, had uh, Central been able to win possession from that neutral contest, it would have been all over Red Rover. That's what happened before when uh, uh, Steinberner, Steinberner got the goal. Our stats indicate also the Magpies are in charge this game. They've doubled the amount of possession so far at the 15-minute mark of this first quarter. I think that's a fair call, Mark. The, the Bulldogs certainly are out of the blocks, but, gee, the Magpies have arrested the tide now and really settling in good. Quick pick right out of that pack. I think it was number nine. Well, could have been Tony Bamford, I'd like to believe. Exciting young player, Bamford, isn't he? Oh, he is. He's very, very quick over the first 10 to 15 metres. Very ah. clever with his possessions as well. Geister from fullback. Now, I thought they were doing it better when he was going long. This uh, short action is not working for them because Port Adelaide are allowing them the kick, and then they're stopping it dead at half-back. Schwert now elects to go for the long target. Hicks underneath it, but look at this. It's Fiegert crashing through. This fellow loves this time of the year. Towards full forward, Chalmers over the top. Paddled it down. Binky was there, but Schwert was good enough to rove it and carry it across the line. Just in the end, it was rather well done by Chalmers. He was caught behind, but then elected for the defensive action to keep the ball alive. He punched from behind, giving his rovers the opportunity. However, the boundary line was there before all. Chalmers will contest it. Puts the ball back to Paul Ace. Paul Ace takes it, also takes a high tackle from Danny Hong and will take the free kick. Inside 50. So the score should register. Darrell Paul Ace, the captain of the Magpies unit, has been on football park in September many times before. Paul Ace puts it on its way, controls the kick, it beautifully weighs it. Has it made the distance? I think it has. Umpire puts up two fingers, it is. Daryl Ball Ace's first goal, that's the Magpies third. Terrific player, Daryl Ball Ace, lining up in the centre, the captain of Port Adelaide Magpies, playing on Ricky McGowan, the informed sentiment of recent weeks. A big duel there. McGowan has had possessions. Ball Ace, however, now has a goal to his name. At the bounce, a 16-point advantage to Port Adelaide. We're almost 18 minutes into the first quarter. Central District have never won an elimination final. Today is D-Day. Jakes thumps it down. Hotwood around the corner. Lewis took front position on Lees and did it pretty well in the finish. Tregenza handballs to Brown, who just gives it away to Holm. Clever work, finds Cook, he goes short. Out on the lead, doing it pretty well in the finish. Was Wakeman, but oh, no, I able to take it. Jew pushed in the back, Steinburner short. Caught one high, it didn't matter. Oh, it did, because Lockwood dropped the mark. Wakeman comes again, but it's stolen away. Fieger playing particularly well, finds Carter. And Steinburner just gives him a little bit of how you're going. Welcome to 1998 finals on the ABC. Very undisciplined there by Steinbetter. I'm not sure what's going through his mind, and it surely must be a free kick to Carter. I think they're just trying to unsettle Carter, Ken. If there's been a criticism of Carter in recent years, in finals he's let his emotions carry him away. And I think Steinbetter just had the opportunity to see if that little old wound could be reopened. Sean Chambers waits to enter the playing field, just waiting for the player to come off. As Carter will take the kick, half back line. Everybody cut. Good kick by Carter. Looking for Jakes, also in there is Binky. Comes to the ground now. Diving out of the top there was McGowan. Couldn't take it. Boyle and just too quick and too elusive. Gets the kick forward. Burgoyne with a couple of kicks and a couple of neat handballs. But not quite able to finish that one off. Steinburner taken from the bench, taken from the ground there. Perhaps for disciplinary reasons. I certainly think appropriate on that occasion. Sometimes uh, in a final like this, you just need to talk to the coach. He said, look, that's an error that's cost us. But you're doing pretty well. Get back out there. Sometimes a personal message, again from the coach is better. Bergeron finishes like he usually does, and it's a fair mistake. Morgan de Borlase is good play. They square it up and uh, go back in the corridor. Oh, Binky. That was clever, and the umpires paid it. Four bites of the cherry, held off his man and juggled a beauty. 
And just how those little things can unsettle your team, David. Like, back to the Steinburner incidents. It's from that half-court flank, which should have been a neutral situation, a throw-in. However, the free kick given to Carter, Carter, Port Adelaide, now with their second opportunity to score from that discretion. Yep. Steinburner, you suspect, uh, just looking to show some aggression. Sometimes it just needs just to be... Just up for him. Yeah, controlled. No, no. <laughs> your, your point's well made and accepted. And Binky really makes it pay, doesn't he? Drills it beautifully and gets his first and Port Adelaide's fourth. Binky, Stephen Swert, his opponent. Binky, a supreme aerialist. And I think might have the advantage there if Port can keep putting them to them in the air one-on-one. -on -one. Brian Binky, one goal for the afternoon. A tremendous juggling mark. One-handed mark that was. We see 29 plays six. We'll play 20 minutes into this first quarter. Good bounce again. Jake's gets the ball down the ground. McGowan's tackled out the football. Jake's in there again to try to get the ball moving. Over the top of him was Tim Cook, the little rover. And again, just holding up proceedings, just keeping the ball in the area. The change made now. Hicks onto Binky and Swert onto the dangerous left footer, David Brown. Bowler gets the ball down. Chance here, as we see Carter just committed for the football, dives over the top. And he too quite content just to keep the ball in that area. Great work by Carter. At the bounce, 21 and a half minutes. We're almost into quarter time. And Port Adelaide have done the job in this first term. Home off the ground, just thumps it forward, runs at it again. He just forces the ball on. Lees did very well to chop him off at the pass. Dragenza comes in over the top of the ball. Head down, he's a hard-nosed player, this fellow. Some criticism early in his career, but you couldn't critique his performance in the last couple of seasons. Great courage, head down, and goes hard at it. Steinburner prepares to come back on. Four centrals. Home front position. Jakes from behind did very well to get it down to Morgan, who put a long handball forward. Vines runs onto it nicely. Potter and Vines has been an equal battle, but Vines has got two points to half forward. D. Smith underneath it. Ryan has unsettled him. Ryan has did well in the contest. Brown forced off it by Schwert. Here comes Burgoyne. Daniel in charge. D. Smith. And the uh, throw. No, Mark Hardy says it was a throw. Alfie Steed blasts one deep into the forward line. Geister and Chalmers manhandle each other, and out the back, it hits the point post. That was sensational by Burgoyne, wasn't it, oh, Too quick. <laughs> the hands were too quick for the eye. Out for Steed there. Good balance under a fair bit of pressure. Just got the ball up forward. In a final, though, Mark, you can't get through a tackle like that. You shouldn't be allowed to, should you? Shouldn't be allowed. Ball thrown in. Chance for the Magpies again. Coming through and taking a little bit high there was Cassidy. He'll go back. Players are moving for him. Umpire blows back on time. Connor short, he wants to use him. He decides to ignore the lead. Big Bradley Muller's also given the lead out of the wing. Rhymer's in front. In there McGowan, taken again by two mag power, by two magpies. Great gang tackle so far in this game. Ball comes out, kicked around his body. Danny Holm goes for it. Figures in front. Figured again, knocks the ball forward. Dragens should take this and goes. He doesn't. He's taken from behind there by, looks like it was Hicks. Ball comes out through Muller. Chance here for the Bulldogs to go forward. It's a good lead out in front. Ambrose from behind just uses his experience. Maybe a little bit of uh, nudging from behind that takes the mark. And the umpire in a terrific position to see that too, so it mustn't have been there. It looked like it was from here though. You know, sometimes when a player like Lockwood gets caught under the ball, he gets a little tiny tap and you throw yourself forward trying to uh, con the umpire. The umpire wasn't con. Lockwood just misread the ball. Johnny Chambers goes for a chat with the coach. Peter Jonas really working overtime. Communication the key today. They're down by 23 points. We are almost 25 minutes into the first quarter of this cutthroat elimination final. Jakes to Morgan is a good combination so far in this match. From defence, working hard was Hicks, but he had nowhere to go. Dragenza cut off Schwert, did it pretty well. Brown the loose crumb, needs Binky for support, he gets him. And a long bomb in towards full forward. Chalmers well held by Geister. At the back door, it's Cassidy working overtime. Oh, well done, Chalmers ran him down. Good second effort. Rymers, support from Cassidy, flicks it forward. Rick McGowan, the link man, a high bomb. Oh! 
Hard work for this uh, out there is Hicks. Lee spoils Brown. Handles to Ruckman, if you don't mind. And Jakes goes forward. Geister read it beautifully. It's good, good defensive play by Geister. Positioned himself in between his man and the ball and read it to perfection. Swerd takes a look. Chip kick over the top. We'll get it back again. He doesn't really want it. He does this time. Under his right leg. So Swerd upfield. Behind was Cook. Good mark by Jared Paulton. Yeah, they've got everything covered to make pies at this stage. Anything that the Bulldogs look like building up, they're there in numbers to cut it off and then using the ball well through the midfield. Mad Dog Morgan, right leg, sees Chalmers moving again. He's out in front, should take this. Good work by the little fella in Cassidy. He got one course, a little bit too high. And the free kick will be paid. You can see there the defensive action straight into the side of the net. <laughs> it's a good umpiring decision. Chalmers well within distance. He's a prodigious kick of the football. Looking hard as Brett Chalmers early in this game. The ball's been forward inside the 50 metres on 20 occasions. Against Central's only six. So really the Magpies just too much firepower through the midfield to cross half back. Cook comes off for a rest. Coming on number 22 is Mark Jones. Chalmers very close to the man on the mark. Three or four steps as he walks in. Maybe not the best address the number behind comes up 4-6 play centrals one goal always like to see those goals kicked David in the latter part of the quarter and the opening part of the next one but it's two up on your opposition if you can drill them Rhymers showing his mobility across half back that's what central need from him the kick however was just a little stray Jones who's just come on well deep to it by Fulton Cook was taken off to give uh, Jones a run, but look at Darren Smith. Port Adelaide hurt you. Rymers was exploding out of defence, but was caught out as the ball came back quickly. The kick wasn't good enough. Now, a great mark by Hicks. Well, don't they need him today? Hotwood. Short. Oh, Jones worked. He needed to. He couldn't afford to have missed that. Holton was closing, and the ball was only at 50. The stationary. The midfield well, was stationary. I, I, I was just thinking. Board stationary. Static is the word and we were critical of them last week against dirt weren't we they were very very static moller was the target vines carter the overlap look at the run from defense port adelaide Chalmers now down from full forward having a run you might suspect on the ball and vicky it works for them centrals were slow out of defense port adelaide grabbed it and look at the rebound and vicky will get a shot for goal yeah i like this kid vines that was a beautiful hand very heady very smart he's done some good football things and that pass, Pinky was really out of position there, but worked so hard watching the flight of the ball and took a terrific mark. Pinky, an accurate kick, 20 goals, 9 for the year before today. In fact, that's his 22nd because he's already got one in this match, and that's his second. So 22 goals, 9, extremely accurate kicking. Port Adelaide looking the goods. You can see here the quick hands. Good there on the overlap, as we called it. Chalmers takes it, puts it into the, the sweet spot on the footy ground there. And look at that, outnumbered two to one, but really worked hard for front position and was rewarded. Magpie, just, just too much firepower through the ground at the moment. The ball's bounced down. Chalmers has come in to take this ruck duel up against Radley Moller. Coming through with eyes only for the football with Brian Lees. Again, ball ace the captain, knocks it out intelligently, finds the player in Bamford. Good kick by Bamford going forward. Mark couldn't be taken by Smith. Oh, Burgoyne, what can he do? Chips to that forward. Who's up forward? Number 24 and Beaky coming across there was Alfred Steed. Socks the ball off the ground. The Magpies just too desperate. I mean, they're just aware of the ball coming into their area and the intensity and the actual pressure they're applying. It's too much for the Bulldogs. Rivers over the top of Alfie Steed. Steed tried to thump it down. Picked up, loose ball, get, uh, oh, it wasn't hard and exceptional. Smothered the ball right off the boot of Hicks. The little one percenters are very evident for Port Adelaide. You've seen Brian Binky try to shepherd Cassily to allow Steed free possession of the football. Unsuccessful, but the intent was there. And then you've seen the smother from Hahn. Those little things, tackle, smother, shepherds, run to space, the unrewarded things, the things which are unacclaimed. Not really taken notice of, I suppose, by the... By the vote givers. Smith down the throat of Steed and Steed forward to Burgoyne is good play. And I think uh, Brett and Daniel knows that he's got uh, a tough job on his hands today. 
Still, I think, a good matchup, though. But this kid is an exceptionally talented Bergwijn. But the reason he's got the football, the smother from Hahn. One point off his boot so far in this match. He'll kick from 52 metres. Distance uh, might just stretch him. He'll lob it right on the square. Or will he get the distance? He's going for distance. He's just offline and hit the post. Good attempt into a difficult breeze. Well, is it? I thought they were kicking with the breeze, Ken. I think it's... Check up... But I think it's pretty much straight across the ground. It might be to the advantage of the Maggies. Rhymer's over the top now, trying to find the running Steinberg. A great duel here, Steinberg and Dragenza. A couple of speedsters. The ball's up forward, coming out hard with Wakeman. Great spoil from behind by Northeast. That's a perfect spoil. Tremendous. Had his player on the outside and just got the right hammer around to connect perfectly with the footy and push it to the boundary line. Last two weeks have been good for Port Adelaide. Two big wins. North last week and before that, Norwood, a big one. In good form. The round was Lockwood. It's high. Will he keep it in? I don't think he will. The umpire indicates it hasn't. It's out of bounds on the fall. So 31 and a half minute mark into this first quarter. You see the Magpies now up by 32 points. Carter from defence. It's a long quarter. And he just slows things down a little. Siren imminent. Though in Lockwood, uh, just having a look, fellas, one kick so far hasn't been involved in this match at all. As Carter, a clearing kick. Brown over the top. Lees was the target, but the handball was short. Elfie Steed picks it up. Jams it onto the left boot under pressure from Sutala. Rymers. Daniel claimed by Burgoyne and Daniels oh. puts the ball to touch. It's a throw in. See here is well tackled. And no doubt that that was a deliberate intent there, but not picked up by the umpire. Thrown in Smith in front. Comes to ground. The ice man, what will he create? Just needs to pick it up. Good work by McGowan. McGowan should take the free kick. A little bit high there from Scotty Hand. McGowan up quickly, realising his side. Needs a score there before quarter time. Couldn't, the siren has sounded here. The first quarter of the elimination final sees Port Adelaide. They're five goals, eight, 38. They lead Central's one goal. Start of the second quarter here, the elimination final between Port Adelaide and Central District. Good bounce. You see Charms is starting to rake. Jakes is still sitting on the bench. Ball comes out the least. Good handball across. Finds Fegan. Again, the Magpies go forward. Good work there by Alfred Steed to take front position. A little bit of nudge there by Cassidy. He takes the mark. Cassidy, quick kick forward, finds Stewie Jew. Stewie Jew takes it and runs with it. Pushed in the back as he kicked it from the ice man. The free kicks pay downfield. McGowan wants to go on with it. He won't be able to. The ball will be, will be brought back. And joining us in uh, commentary, Michael Parsons. Absolute pleasure to be here as well, David. Just a couple of changes in the port side. I've gone through uh, after quarter time. Darren Smith gone to full forward. Biggie out to centre, half forward. Chums has gone into the ruck, have a run on the ball, get him into the game a little bit. And Big Jack sitting on the bench after a reasonable first quarter as Central's work it onto their half forward line. Good build up here. Stewie Jew, the player who took the mark in the middle of the ground, turned and kicked forward and was pushed as he was kicked. Mark, that's one thing we have been critical of Central Districts about is their static play when they get a restart situation in that half back the centre of the ground. Stewie Jew did it differently and they've now got a resulting shot on goal and it's a lovely kick. Stewie Jew brings up his first goal for the afternoon. A good build up by Stewie Jew. The much needed goal by the Bulldogs. Stewie Jew is a very accomplished player for his age. Strong at the ball, lovely kicking action and if Centrals are going to make a dent in this lead that Port Adelaide ca currently carry of uh, what is it, 26 points Stewie Jew will have to get into the game. 38 plays, 12. We're back now to a 26-point margin. It was 32 points at quarter time. 
Conway having a run in ruck for Central. Thumps it down, but it's Carter who drives it back to center back. Oh, Steed, great courage to hold his line and thump the ball to Brown. Oh, I'll put this one down to Steed. It was just out of this world the way he tacked that one. Burgoyne gets the goal, but I think uh, morally, the man who actually got it was Steed. You have to admire the way Alfie Steed goes about his football. The uncut diamond, I think we'd have to say. His second effort there was absolutely fantastic. Concentrated the ball when the competition came in, didn't take his eyes off it, but the ball went to ground and he was immediately back and at the ball. The junkyard bog type approach to footy that is going to carry this guy to a lot of games at this level. Peter Boy gone, finishes with the goal. That's his first for the afternoon. Good thump there going forward. It's the big fella, Mark Conway. At it again, Morgan, also Spatala. Been very quiet in that first quarter. As were a lot of Central Districts players, Mark. I was just about to ask David that. You'd, you'd find it very difficult to find a best player in that first quarter for the Bulldogs. Maybe they're Ruckman and Moller. Yeah, I think uh, Moller was probably the man who uh, did something. And after that, you really struggle. Bamford over the top of the ball. This is precision. Darren Smith oh, there. Burgoyne. Burgoyne. Oh, he's clever. Very, very clever. Slippery little sucker. And he gets his second. How clever do you have to be to just to be playing quicker than everybody else, David? That man has got some toe. Still going to be able to read the ball. Have a look where he starts. He starts at half forward. He's off to the left now. And there he goes. He takes off. Gives everybody a 15-metre start. And he beats them by two. That is something special. I'll actually take one. I don't think he did get 15 metres start. He was standing next to his Central District's opponent. And he's the one that made the quicker mental decision that it's time to go. So, yes, it's a slippery little sucker. Jarmers up against Conway. The ball comes to the ground. The quick kick out looked like Poulton going forward. The mark's taken by Cotter. Cotter's got Holm out wide. Carter should get to him. He doesn't. Holm takes it. Good work there by Holm. Good build-up's good for the Bulldogs. And good mark taken by Lockwood. And we notice again when Central Districts take the ball and play on and run through that midfield region, they have a chance at another shot on goal. Bowen Lockwood. He's only had one kick for the afternoon. That's his first mark. The chance here to kick his first goal. Lovely action there by Lockwood. The crowd reaction's not good. So behind by Bowen Lockwood. Another score. So 2 1 13. Plays Port Adelaide 7 8 50. They're the ones that hurt when you're down, you're coming back, momentum starting to swing your way. You need to be able to take advantage of those set shots from the 30 to 50 metre range. Dragenza started in the midfield, blasted wide, and Ambrose has found him with the kick. What a handy player to have coming back from his AFL club to play in the final. Simon Dragenza. Well, the kick was shabby, wasn't it? Uh, didn't find the target. Huey Rymers just plucks it off. But as uh, Michael Parsons has pointed out, so very static. The Bulldogs, they stop, they look around. Again, you can see the Central Districts players across the centre of the ground. No run at all. They're just standing with their arms out, calling for the ball. That's a good mark. Yeah, but to be fair, the player's got it, sets the tone, doesn't he? He's got to take off and run. And then you create run just by people going off. Hopwood, another static kick into the forward line. Two on one contest. No Central forward's got a chance on that one. Fegan overruns it, but quite content to see it carry across the line. Yeah, Central District, you can feel the momentum is with them, but if they don't get a couple of scores on the board, bring this lead back to somewhere with respect, it's going to slip away very quickly. Bulldogs, Mark, need really somebody to uh, light them up and show the way. Well, Stewie Jew, with his limited opportunities, really has done that so far. The first goal was kicked by Stewie Jew in that first five minutes of the first uh, quarter. By Steinberg. So not by, but built up by Stewie Jew across the top over Steinberg, I meant to say. Second goal again by Stewie Jew. Good build up through the middle of the ground. Chance here, a game for the Magpies. Vines came out very, very hard. Hicks was there. It's back to Jew around his body. It's a high ball. Back there was Bolton. Good chance here for the Bulldogs. He comes out to Wakeland. Goes back to Sotala. Sotala over his left shoulder. It's high, giving his forwards no opportunity at all. The ball's fallen short. The wind just holding it up. McGowan takes it. Carter's in there. He's throwing his weight around. Over the top there was Hopwood taking on Carter. McGowan and screen. Not in very good condition. Carter, Mark, uh, as uh, McGowan went to ground, put the knees in. The umpires got in there very, very quickly and applied a 50-metre penalty. And I think Carter's still a little bit disappointed with the way he was dispatched 
to the coach's box earlier in the game and there was a little kerfuffle over that one and uh, seen as the evener upper. So Brett Jarm is brought on the line, or the goal line that is. We'll watch McGowan go back, just chips the ball over his head. That's McGowan's first goal for the afternoon. And there's booze around the ground here at Football Park. Mm, a lot of Port Adelaide supporters didn't like that one, but uh, looking from the angle we had, I think it was... Uh, well, you tell us, Ma Michael. He takes the mark, and Carter comes in late with a knee in it. That's what the umpire saw. The umpire was dead right. And I don't think when the contact actually happened, it maybe wasn't as hard as what Carter was thinking about initially. He pulled himself up about here and slid off to the side, but we'll go with the umpire on that one, David, as we always do. No, we don't always, but the umpire was dead right that time. And 50 plays 19. Carter goes to the bench, so the coach agrees as well. No question about that. We've talked about uh, Carter's fragility in big games and just then lack of discipline costs Port Adelaide a goal. Back at centre, Brown and Holm battle it out. That's a good battle as well. Brownie comes up. He's had uh, seven handballs and just one kick, David Brown. Holm has had three and one, so Brown winning that contest. Rymers thumps it down. Schwert paddled it further forward. Trent Orman Allen, who started on the bench, drives it wide on the left boot. To well done, Steinborner. Thumped the ball down. Ball A's. Brown kick number two. Wide. Binky was a target. Hicks just toe poked it. Oh, Burgoyne. What a turn of speed. Squares it up. Uh, Ian D. Smith. Darren came charging out at that. Daniel did very well to get to the contest. He hesitated for a split second and then realised he needed to put it on the line. That slippery little customer is remaining to be slippery. Fantastic speed from Peter Burgoyne. And then the presence of mind to put it right in the hot spot, right at centre half forward, and gave Darren Smith a real chance to take that mark. Conway takes the ruck uncontested. Back to Draganza. What can Draganza do? The build up's good here for the Magpies. Smith being well held there by Geister. Off the ground is Banford. Oh, sensational goal by Tony Banford. And I would say that is a, a replay of Peter Gerboyne, Burgoyne's goal where the Port Adelaide player has just made the first decision to go towards the ball. So he's the first person to break and go towards the ball, gets his hand or get, gets his feet on it. Another goal to Port Adelaide, and they're starting to get a substantial lead reasonably early in the second quarter. 37 points, you'd call that substantial, Michael, I agree. Home claimed by, on that occasion, Chalmers, Cotter, and Vines. I think Cotter's had his hands full. Maybe it's time for Switala to come down on the wing. Cotter recovers, drives it up. This could result in a mark, and it is a beauty to Wakeland, a chess mark. It's always nice to see your full forward be able to lead into space to take that mark on the chest. They bring it in forward. To, to be fair, Wakeland's a great athlete. Northeast is dogged and tough. But you'd have to suspect one on one with a bit of space, Wakeland would win the contest. I immensely admire Northeast defensive capabilities, but we saw Wakeland play last week. In a period of early in the third quarter last week, we saw him take three or four goals as he kicks another beautiful. So Wakeland gets his first, Port Adelaide are 8-8, Central's a 4-1. Michael, you've got to admire the way the Bulldogs aren't throwing in the towel. That's right, they've got to come back. It's an elimination final, David. You've got to be hard at the ball. They're in a bit of a hole, but if they can get some run through their half-back line and through the centre, and they've got Michael Wakeland up there to take the marks, they've got every opportunity to get themselves back into the game. Might just give Central's a bit of an opportunity, Mark, to steady, think about it. <laughs> 56 now plays 25. A little bit of work there by Northeast. Doesn't like conceding goals, especially to his opponent. Three goals apiece by both sides in the second quarter. The ball be bounced. 11 and a half minutes in the second quarter. Conway up against Chalmers. Ball lays quickly to, to get the ball moving forward. Ah, Burgoyne. The magic is on the show this afternoon. Something special about Peter Burgoyne. He is a very, very classy player. Made a change. Steinburner's got Burgoyne now. Oh, he hasn't got the pace. Steinburner? He hasn't got the pace to go with Burgoyne. I don't think there's too many players in the SNFL competition that would be able to stay with Peter Burgoyne 
That is just magnificent football. Stein and he has set this game alive. Steinbloom has won, I can promise you. Oh, <laughs> we'll wait and see, David. Smith on his way. The umpire comes across. He's pulled the ball across. He has done that. Another behind for the Magpies. 8-9, plays 4-1. Again, though, you admire the decisions that Peter Burgoyne makes. That decision to just back his pace and play on, again, was the thing that created the opportunity. Dry ground, big final. Not a better uh, place than to showcase your talent than this. Rymers took front position, but Vines just the niggle from behind, brought the ball to ground. Ball A's couldn't get clear. Binky in support dives on top of it and forces the bounce. We're just on 12 and a half minutes into the second quarter of this elimination final. And it's 57 plays 25. And Centrals have got a lot of work to do if they're to win this one. Rymers over the top. Alfie Steed handballs it into space. Back from where it came, went Hicks. Vines over the top of it to Cook in pursuit of him. Wraps it up and again forces a bounce. That was a nothing handball from Hicks. Just had a little bit of space. Didn't have anybody actually body pressure right on him and just handballed it into empty space. No real advantage to his team. Jude takes the ruck, knocks it forward. It's only gone as far as Tregenza. What can Tregenza do? He drags the player forward. Vines will back himself. He goes around the player and Jude sets the ball forward. Smith is beaten out in front there by Geister. In and out of it again is Morgan with Swerd. Burgoyne just there on the outside, just, just on the skirt, just waiting for the ball to chip out. A good work here by the Maggies. Yeah, they're looking good when they start to run that ball through the midfield. And they've got this good kid can play, can't he? He's quick, got good skills, didn't quite lift the leg enough just then. It's a running game after all. Fines. Hit high by home. The umpire's picked out the infringement. So he's certainly displaying his talent. Chips it in short. It's not a bad kick, is it? Underneath that one, Vicky took front position, missed it. Bam for toe poked it into space. Daniel undecided over the top of the ball, lifts the eyes. Goes the other side of goal. Schwert caught on the uh, right boot, decided to handball it into space. And gives it away to Cook, who chips it short. Hopwood missed it. Gets a second opportunity. Scrubbers won wide on the left boot. It was a nothing type of kick. Polt. Determined and dogged. Drives a long bomb to Darren Smith, who's underneath this one. Muscled off it. Geist a good attempt. And Cotter at the back door. Just needs a little bit of support, but he floats one up. Rymer's caught well underneath that. And Ambrose will relieve pressure for the Port Adelaide defence. Magpies have the numbers here through the Genza. We'll go out wide of the Chalmers. Got Brown there also assisting. Chalmers goes to the top of the square. Who's back there? Beakingly takes a magical mark. Conway quickly gets the ball to boot, goes for the boundary line. Will it make the distance? I don't think it will. Or has it? It has. Again, it just couldn't quite get there to keep the ball in. Probably a wasted opportunity there from Port Adelaide. They had three to one running on the outer side of the ground. The Chalmers went to go that long kick. We know he is a beautiful kick. You see there, Jake's just waiting to come back on. Will Chalmers go back to full forward or will Chalmers come to the bench, David? I think they might uh, use both big fellas running free the way they're travelling at the moment. Only time will tell. Fiegert sets himself. Lees releases Poulton. They're just charging through Port Adelaide. Confidence is high, but they're kicking into their forward line. It's just a little erratic at the moment. Schwert. Steinburner. On the right boot, a short one. Now they're playing tough corridor football. Chambers towards centre forward. Lewis held his position in front of Ambrose. Tregenza, Holm got him in the tackle. Ambrose to Trent Ormond Allen is good in handball, in close. And Fiegert wide just puts it into the path of David Brown. I think uh, just picks it up. Steadies. Chalmers. Tregenza, oh, the handball was bad. Killed Tregenza and he got cleaned up too. Well, Brett, I think they'll remember that. It's just a poor handball. Your teammates never forget those. It was a poor handball, it's resulting in the restart. A little confusion on the bench for Port Adelaide right now. They weren't sure who was coming on, who was coming off for Darren Smith as he hits the pie. And Big Jarks comes back on. And Scotty Hahn retakes his position after I think he thought he was the one that was going to sit for a little while. And how much pressure can the Bulldogs take? They really have, you know, a fair bit of it. This is finals football. Would you expect that? The first side to crack. Oh, right Rockwood play. over the top. It's not paid. Umpire calls play on. Good handball out by McGowan. Finds Connor. Umpire's coming back. Someone who's held. 
It's a Magpies players. Tell me my passes, where that one came from. I don't know. I was watching the football and it came from the where the football wasn't. Brian Leaves was dragged back and the umpire was right on the spot. Oh, that's why they're paid the big money to make decisions like that. Cassidy takes a good mark. We'll just settle things down. He's got players moving. We'll come out. Looks like Wakeland was and Hicks. It's near the play. Finally ends up with Connor. Connor on the left foot. Over the top of Lockwood. Lees is with him. Lees just goes to the safety of the boundary line. This is a good battle, Lockwood on Lees. Uh, Lewis has got Ambrose, so they're reshuffling their forward line central. I like uh, Lockwood on Lees because Lees is just a runner and tough and aggressive. Lockwood's got the athleticism to go with him and perhaps just present him with a little bit of a challenge. We're almost 18 minutes into the second quarter and the Bulldogs need a lift. They need to get it from their forward line and their midfield. Trent Orman Allen high up, thumps it down. Vines just paddles it forward to Colton. Now figured, isn't he playing well? A long one along the boundary side. Safety first, the way Port Adelaide played out of defence, unless they've got a target. They keep it very close to the boundary. It doesn't take them long to gain that critical 100 yards out of the 50 region to bring it back and restart it on the wing. But Port Adelaide continue to give their forwards opportunities just by the way they're working at the body in the ball, getting hands on it and getting a 50 metre entry. Big to set it up forward. Chambers back to full forward. Jake's into the ruck. Ball lays around his body. Cassidy, maybe one of the better players this afternoon. We've seen plenty of football. As the ball has been inside 50 for the Magpies on numerous occasions. The chance here again for the Maggies. Over the top from Brown to Bamford. He lines up for his second of the quarter. Too easy. There's no pressure at all applied by the Central District side. Mark, you dead right. That was much, much too easy for a finals game of football. Three Port Adelaide players to one on the half forward flank, resulting in just the run in to an open goal. And David, it was a good finish though. Well, Bamford uh, is renowned for being a good finisher. In 23 games, he's kicked, uh, or 24 games, he's kicked 27 goals. He's had a lot of trouble with uh, injury and fitness, but when he's fit, he is a devastating player. Two goals, two this afternoon. As Port Adelaide go to 9 9, Central's a 4 1. This is do or die. And Port Adelaide looking pretty good, formidable, you would say. Well done, Cook. Out of the middle, long bomb. Ambrose underneath it, couldn't quite take it in two attempts. Orman Allen dragged off a Chambers releases Stewie Duke. Comes back on the left with the handball. Simon Lewis, one step, was run down. Couldn't get it away. Poulton did very well. Cook claims him. Poulton goes to the back door where Morgan releases Bamford. One end to the other, Bamford. Now the ungainly kicking style of Northeast, generally effective. Under it was Lees and, Lock and uh, Lockwood. And Lees is a bullocking type. Port Adelaide are just on another level when it comes to the intensity at the competition, aren't they? You saw then with Lewis, took the ball, just should have turned around and kicked, tried to steady, take his time. It's not a Sunday picnic out there. This is elimination finals. Too much pressure for that. Chance for the Bulldogs. McGowan's taken again very quickly there by Ball Ace. Michael, I'm trying to think what uh, Trent Norman Allen's working on when he comes high over the top of the Ruckman to thump it forward. I always wonder about it. It's a, it's a great opportunity for a set play, and I think we'll see more and more set plays come from the restart situations in Australian football. The Swans do it a lot, but when it's not structured, you're just banging it into space. I can't see the value. Ground level again, ball aces in there. Jake's also the tall Ruckman. Plenty of pats on the back, plenty of encouragement shown by all Magpie players out on the field at the moment. Realising that they're just starting to find a little bit of form in September. They love playing in grand finals. Schwert again, Paul Ace, just doing the hard things, the captain, just setting, leading by example. He just keeps getting off the ground at the bottom of the pack, doesn't he? He's just at the ball all day. Adam Sotala preparing to come on, the 20-year-old. Target of a number of AFL clubs, but he hasn't had much of the ball today. McGowan releases the ball towards Lewis. One-on-one uh, -on -one contest with Ambrose. Ambrose recovered. The ball came to ground, and Ambrose streaks away with it. Heads it towards left half forward. Alfie Steed pushed off it by Castley. Now it's Schwert run down by Burgoyne, and Burgoyne just 
rattles him in and corrals him like a sheepdog. Same comment as last time, the intensity of the Port Adelaide football team is just way above centrals at this stage. And again, demonstrated there by Peter Burgoyne. They are playing with a lot of emotion, the Magpies. We're just seeing, just even then, I mean, the acknowledgement on Peter Burgoyne's effort by his teammates. They were just, they grabbed him, picked him up, and just let him know that the work that he did is assisting his side out there this afternoon. Now, uh, last time that a side won the flag from the elimination, from the elimination final, 1984, Norwood. Norwood. Yep, they did it from fifth. Port Adelaide are fourth. And you just sense that the way Port Adelaide are playing today, they might create a little bit of history of their own this year. Again, Bamford just weaves a little bit of magic through the pack. Up to Beaky. Beaky out in front. Big hands. Don't you wish Brian Beaky had been born six foot six? He'd be devastating, wouldn't he? He has got the best jump at the ball and the best hands going around. He's just a touch small to play the main position, that is the main forward position, the next level up. Six foot and a half an inch in the old Mingo, 184 centimetres. He plays pretty tall. But he's still missing five inches, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> but he's, I really do like the way he plays. Biggie lines up, puts it on its way. I think that's his second goal for the afternoon. Could be his third goal for the afternoon. Kicked two in the first quarter, one in the second. The Magpies now, they're 10 goals, 9, 69. Central Districts, four goals, 125. It's almost to the time where you're wondering, you're wondering what Peter Jonas can do from Central Districts to stem the flow of the Port Adelaide attack on the ball, really. And that's, I think, it's where it's got to start, David. Just a genuine attack on the ball, getting hold of the ball. I think when the patient's bleeding like this, it's likely to bleed to death. And I think uh, Port Adelaide have been inflicted a mortal blow on the Bulldogs' 1998 season. Jake's up, Hull just forces the ball into space, trying to let somebody in the Central District forward line run onto it. But Bolton. Talk about players playing on emotion. He's certainly high up amongst them. Binky gives away a free kick. The advantage allowed to flow. Steinburner short to Stewie Jew. And each Steinburner and Jew, you would suspect, just giving them a little bit of drive out of the midfield. That was a beautiful kick. Wakeland, oh! You've got to be careful, Paul. I didn't see the incident. as it goes short. Jimmy Cook. Well, it was quick movement, wasn't it? Uh, I like the way they brought it quickly from the defensive zone. The quickest way that you can bring the ball through the through the midfield is a long kick. It's something that the, the clubs at the top of the AFL table are working on. The long kick disposition, and that was as good as it gets from Stuart Hill. Tim Cook with 24 goals, 11 for the year, makes it 25. That's his first today, and they need more, Michael, of that. They just need quick movement from defence and somebody finishing. They've got the player up there. Michael Wakeland is a good player. He takes a good grab. He's got a good kicking style. He can be the man to do the job for them but it really is coming down to getting the ball in the midfield and moving it quickly to give him the opportunities. Tough day the Central's office. camp, yeah. Tough day at the office there. Too many <laughs> smiles there, even after they kicked that last goal by Tim Cook. 69, plays 31. They're willing to time on. Danny Holm coming back from injury, as has a few of his teammates this afternoon. I was just thinking, Mark, of Brenton Daniel there. Coach says Thursday night of training, you're picking up Peter Burgoyne in a final at Football Park with the big flanks and the big wings. You just go, oh. Hard job for Gowan. Good smother off the boot there by Alfred Steve. Allows the ball ace in. Burgoyne's around it. Unfortunately, couldn't quite get to it. Danny Holm just chips in, takes the mark. So Danny Holm, oh, runs himself into trouble. Releases the handball across to McGowan. McGowan quickly up forward. Out in front again was Wakeland, couldn't take it. Paul Lason there again, covering an enormous amount of territory this afternoon. Tips it up, they had the numbers around the ball. At speed across to Lees. Lees looks further afield for Binky. He's got Hicks on his hammer. The ball just finds itself out over the line. The power players are still here. Their power side's out of the finals in the AFL. The Magpies fans are here. We talked at quarter time about good players for Centrals in the first quarter, and we came up with Radley Moller as probably the best for his effort in the ruck. I think it's time that he maybe slipped back into that position. Well, I don't know that uh, matters a great deal. I mean, there's still plenty of time left in the game for Central, but uh, they're going to find some passion and emotion. We were critical of them a couple of weeks ago, playing without any passion or emotion at all. 
and today they've uh, just been out muscled in every department by Port Adelaide. The Iceman, Hahn, thumps it forward. Goes back after it again. Mick McGowan couldn't get him. Comes up, gets the handball away to Morgan. Around the corner goes Morgan. Vicky did very well. Thumped it into the path of Burgoyne. Releases Steed. Well done, Steinborner. Just got to the contest beautifully. Muscled his way through. Feeds it off to Cassley, who releases it wide. It's still to Connor. Coming grandstand wing. They need to straighten up and just give it back into the corridor. Around the corner, loses the target. He's found the big man. Now where's the run? Nobody coming. Steinborner standing at half back. Could have run on. Lures. Oh, lazy well, kick. Good comment, Mark Naley, and that's what you get when you get a lazy kick. Just didn't get back then that Simon Lewis took the mark. Should have got back up, got back quickly. Just turned and popped the ball in the air. Ah, oh, send the runner out. Brown. Ah, oh, Burgoyne's in there again. They got two players now picking up Peter Burgoyne. Keeps the ball in. As we see, big Mark Conway take it out over the line. Fair call, Mark. Put two on him. <laughs> I like that. Now he's only 19 inches short. <laughs> but, but he's quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear me. Lewis uh, takes a rest in the bunker and they're just restructuring the Central District forward line. Ball A's to Brown was good play. Oh, great courage, Morgan. Recruited from the AFL. Had a stint at Carlton and Essendon. But he has done the hard things that Port Adelaide love in his game. Hard contest off the ball behind play. A few blokes are just feeling their heads. Schwert, ever reliable defender. 31 goes straight down the middle. Ambrose misjudged the chest mark. Jew, the little stocky uh, ruck rover, collected by Trent Orman Allen. Jones gets decked and goes to ground by Fegan. And Lees, the kick comes forward. Tregenza. Oh, look at Leesy go. He loves the big games. It showcases him. He grows a leg, fair dinkum. And Bamford. Well, the kick was uh, misplaced, wasn't it? Not well done. Rymers, McGowan. Geister thumps it down. Well done, Jones. Sold the dummy and squares up. Delivers it long and low, but Ambrose cuts back underneath it and collects the mark. He's a good defender, Ambrose. We've seen him a couple of times this year. Good defensive skills, reasonably tall. And a reasonable turn of pace. He's played a fair bit of football up forward as Richard Ambrose. In the latter half of the season has been moved to full back across the half back line. Really has played, or really has found a bit of confidence. We hear the half time siren here sound at Football Park. And we'll see the Magpies. They're 10 goals, 9, 69. Central District are 5 goals, 1, 31. Welcome back to ABC's coverage of the elimination final between Port Adelaide and Central District. The loser, of course, is finished for the 1998 season and Port Adelaide doing it on the bit, taking all before them at halftime. Morgan over the top of it for Port Adelaide. Bamford, who kicked two first-half goals and was instrumental in Port Adelaide enjoying just a marvellous lead at halftime. Darren Smith underneath that one couldn't take it here comes Vines who was an electric first half Cotter gathered him in and Brown grabs the ball but Cassily forces him out of play will have a throw in one meter around from the Port Adelaide goalpost and joining us for the second half in commentary it's Michael Parsons and Ken Sheldon throw in in front of the big screen 15 meters out Jarks tries it to tap it, but it's all held up. Well tackled. Closed it in. We're really looking for Centrals to get some spark into the game. Bring the scores back to respectability. Umpire puts the ball into the turf. It's rained here at half time. And Burr going off the ground. He's silky. He's terrific. Very talented. Brings up the 11th goal. He's third. 11 9, Port Adelaide. Lead Central Districts 5-1, one. one minute into the third quarter. Watching Peter Burgoyne today, it's not hard to understand why he is establishing himself as an AFL quality player. He is quick and he did, continues to impress me with the decisions he makes on when to expend his effort. 20-year-old Peter Burgoyne, three goals, two. 
talk about players that Central haven't been able to uh, control. He is clearly one of them. Port Adelaide 11 9, Central's 5 1. 44 points the margin. Conway wins the tap. Down it comes to Stewie Jew. So the Bulldogs have got their key uh, running players in their midfield. Jew is there. Figert, whose first half just uh, pushed Central out time and time again, goes yet again for the safety of the boundary line. He's like that for most of the day. But a very disciplined bunch, the backs of Port Adelaide. I'd love to count how many times the ball actually rolls out of bounds on the centre wing as they just head for the safe option. Jakes, who's controlled the aerial duels in Ruck, opposed to Conway. Conway it was who wins that one down. Now, Swatala was just pushed off that too easily. Poulton flicks it forward to Borlase. Underneath this one, it's uh, Hicks playing a defensive role on Binky. Been a tough battle for him. Binky's been very good. Three goals in the first half. Ambrose thumps this one forward. Port Adelaide a discipline in that respect. Schwert had the ball smothered by Vines. Brown thumps it down. Lockwood tries to crash through. Successfully slow. Flicks it away. Hicks. Hahn gathers him in. Brenton Daniel, who spent some time in the second uh, quarter on the bench, goes forward and Jake showed great courage. Backing back, he got hands to the ball. Dives on top, he'll need to get it out now. Does so. Holm flips it forward. Cook. Court coming back on the left. Well, it is a worry, isn't it? He had a kick on the right but couldn't use it. And now, just a nothing kick into space. The forwards were all out of position. And Ambrose content to just rush the behind. He's a quality player, Tim Cook, but it is a weakness, David. It is a definite weakness, not able to explode with pace on that right foot. And that was good courage from Jack. Very good courage. The second effort was good as well, but it did disappoint me when he went to ground as he tried to take hold of the ball instead of just seeing if he could pick it up and run with it, even though he's a very big man. Richard Ambrose plays onto himself, almost makes a mess of it. Gets free, puts the ball, touches it on the ground. Showing a terrific array of skills, Richard Ambrose. Clears the ball 70 metres, 80 metres, in fact, from the goal. Touched over the line and an attempted mark from Brian Lees in the wet. Brian Lees having a word of the umpire. Apparently, he's inviting him to his birthday party. Uh, Lees, he thought he got hit in the face with the football, but he thought somebody clobbered him. What actually happens, he just got hit with a wet football in the face, and they do hurt, I can tell you. He said to the umpire, he said, I got clobbered, I should have got a free kick. The umpire quietly replied, yeah, you got clobbered by a football. He's still got a smile on his face, hasn't he? <laughs> he is a character. No doubt about that, Brian Lees. Leads the Port Adelaide defence, and he's led them beautifully today. Three kicks, four handballs, but it doesn't uh, carry the weight of what he's done in terms of just controlling their defensive zone. Figured high across the top, uh, Ken. Thumps it across the line yet again. We did talk about it in the second quarter, but again, Moller is sitting on the bench, and uh, I thought he had a reasonable start. At least Drew, Drew even with Chalmers that was playing the ruck from Port Adelaide. Is he injured, Michael? I don't know, David. Might have to send you down there to find out. Well, can you look at the structure of uh, Central and you look for somewhere that they're going to get a spark and perhaps it might just be getting people like Holmes, Watala and Jew around the midfield to give McGowan some support? Yes, I think Peter Jonas has probably put that in place. Certainly Morgan, Bamford, Borlase have been terrific for the Magpies. But it is the engine room as to where... In fact, it's all over the ground where the Bulldogs do need a lift. They are seven goals down. And we are only five minutes into the third quarter. So there is plenty of time if they can get themselves up and going. But they need to get the agate. And players like that need to get plenty of it. Home, forward, Jew couldn't take the one-hander. Wakeland releases it to Swatala, who had a very quiet uh, first half. Swatala, around the corner he goes, he pushes it to the point of the square. Lockwood not strong enough on Ambrose. And Ambrose marks deep in defence. Ambrose switches play. Tregenza. A lot of stats in the second quarter. Steinburner shifted off him to pick up the dangerous Burgoyne. And probably a double-headed effect in favour of Port Adelaide at this stage. As North East transfers to play two. Burgoyne. What a terrific lead. Explosive pace. Holds possession inboard to Brown, who turns on his left, is called to play on. Puts it to the sweet spot on the football ground, right 30 metres out from goal. The pack forms the ball, hits the front of the pack, and eventually I think you'll find this may be a bounce. Almost an opportunity gone begging, I think, where David Brown just didn't quite make the right decision, went to play on, didn't want to, and in the end, under pressure, he just had to put the ball up in the air. Right spot, though. 
40 John, metres out. John Platten and Scotty Lee in the coach's box. I'll bet Peter Jonas would love to have those two blokes out on the field. You might just see a different result if they're able to get them out there. Chambers misses it off. Berg going three already. Make that four. This is entertainment. And let me entertain you, Peter Burgoyne is doing just that. Four goals to Burgoyne from 12 kicks in a best on ground performance. Absolutely, David. Absolutely. To have somebody of that quality coming into this team at this time of the year, it just makes Port Adelaide such a big question for the other teams that are still remaining in the finals. Gives them another option to score goals, Ken. Four goals from the half forward flank. Second opponent for the day. Eight goals in the lead, Port Adelaide. As the ball's bounced in the centre here of Football Park, Jarks with the right tap, but only as far as Holm, who read it well. Quick hands to Cook, who pumps it into the forward line. They've all fallen over the Central District Bulldogs. However, it's flicked back into Jew, who's tackled brilliantly. Norman Allen tidied him up. Eyes only for the hips, and executed the perfect tackle. Central's had a real chance there. They had two running players. But again, the defensive intensity, can we call it that? Wrapped up the ball, got a restart. Jakes thumps it down. Hopwood just uh, mongrels one forward into space in hope. Jones couldn't get there. Not a bad uh, matchup, that is a Jones and Northeast. You'll have to describe that skill to me, David, to mongrel one forward. <laughs> mongrel punt. <laughs> well, it's just a nothing kick, isn't it? It's just going nobody, nobody can, nobody can read it under pressure move it forward get the yards and be happy with them well this fellow loves finals Paul Paul Northeast the deputy vice captain for the magpies kicks the ball long and Poulton flies high McGowan takes the crumb left foot inboard not quite connecting properly and ball lays good courage eyes only for the footy to the running Trigenza good use of the football to Lees well tidied up though flicks here to the members stand with the left foot left hand ball David Brown it is, he finds a full forward in Darren Smith, he puts it out in front of him, it's cut off by Beggy, brilliantly crumbed by Hahn and brilliantly tackled by Daniels. Good Football. decision, umpire, well done the Bulldogs. Good decision, okay, we'll go with that one, but he, prior opportunity I'm not sure about. He took him on and he was caught. Yeah, I agree with yeah. you, kid. No question about Second that. Second look. You'll get better at it, Michael. <laughs> Got my old plates on, nice and shiny. <laughs> Hopwood gets 25 against Hahn. Wasn't he good last week in the uh, second half against the Double Blues? Nine kicks, two handballs today. Feeg it up, brings the ball forward. Ball lays square, takes it away and just pushes the ball into space. Port Adelaide have had the dominance in the one-on-one uh, -on -one into space contests. Bamford dragged off it by Cotter. Running through Vines. Cotter claimed. Vines did very well, just thumped it down. Steve couldn't manage the wet ball. Vines got it uh, forward. Bamford couldn't get it clear. It's a very slippery ball. We should explain that there was quite a bit of rain at half time, but Hahn marks it like it's uh, as dry as you like. 55 out, pushes it towards Darren Smith, Geister and Smith one on one. Oh, oh Burgoyne just read it beautifully, didn't he? Now, it looks like Swatala might be on uh, Burgoyne now. That wouldn't be a bad move because Swatala's done nothing. Steinburner, uh, they need for drive. Maybe Swatala's just the man to curb the influence of Burgoyne. Something has to be done, and that probably isn't a bad move. Got some speed, has Sultala. Good skills. 15 metres from the Magpie goals. Cassily, it is, clears to the safety of the line. Under pressure, 12 goals, 9, 81, Port Adelaide. Leading Central District, 5 goals, 2, 32. It's another feature of Port Adelaide's game plan today, or the way they go about their football. The pressure on, from the forwards, just hold the ball in the area, give themselves another opportunity to have a crack at those goals. The Ruckman contest, Smith it is, eventual winner of that contest. Ground level, the ball's forced into the goal square, but rebounded again. Comes back to the front of the square, but off the side of the boot. The attempt was there to bring it to the front of the square for the Port Adelaide Magpies, but good pressure, and in the end, another throw-in takes place. A lot of that, the wind is blowing to the other outer side of the ground. Difficult conditions here now. A bit of rain at the half-time interval. Throw in. Smith front position, well done. Taps it to Binky, advantage. Gee, a little bit of luck there, and there's another six-pointer. Oh, you'd love to see that tap every time that you had a throw in from the forward pocket, wouldn't it? Just opened up the goal face beautifully, and 
unfortunately for Port Adelaide, just couldn't get a toe to the ball. Interchange taking place as Michael Wakeland comes off. And Rymers comes, Rymers comes on quickly into the play. Look at the kick. A high one. The forward's given very little opportunity there. Lockwood uh, flicked it out to Chambers. Home, their best and fairest from last year. Missed a lot of the season this season with injury, as has uh, Scotty Lee and John Platten. And McGowan, for that matter. I think McGowan, this is only his eighth game. Cook, number six for the Bulldogs. Puts the ball towards Lockwood. Lockwood up. Good spoil, Ambrose. Well read. Lees, who again just puts it to the safety of the boundary. Finds in pursuit of the footy and just makes sure that it gets there. Brian Lees coming into the game and doing a fantastic job for the Port Adelaide team at centre-half back. I think very dominant in that position. Creating a lot of runs for the Magpies. The so their back six has been terrific today. I'm very impressed with Jared Poulton's game so far. They've got some consistency in that back six too, haven't they, Ken? The ball in from Jew. Over the back it is. Orman Allen read it well. Fumbles at the crucial time. It's got plenty of time, however. Uses the ball well to ball Asu. Again, fumbles. The ball is slippery. 40 metres out in front of the scoreboard. With the Magpies 50 points in front. Michael Wakeland having a little sit on the bench. Hasn't had a lot of opportunities at full forward today. And he's maybe one player that could come a little bit further up the ground. Maybe have a go at centre-half forward just to supply a target. Well, he was at centre-half forward when he's taken off, Michael. Stand corrected. Conway couldn't get to the contest. Ambrose thumps it down. Jones, the sharpshooter, just forces it over the shoulder. No one home. Lee's at the back door. Bustled off it by Rymers. That's a better contest. You yeah, were just talking about the back six for Port Adelaide. They have been very consistent in the people that have played back there over the last three or four weeks. They're getting that understanding and allowing them to run the ball out, give their forwards the opportunity. Throw-in situation. Five metres from the Bulldogs goal. Ambrose over the back with a big fist and we'll see a repeat. Ambrose can play full back, can play in the ruck if needed, can play full forward if needed. He's certainly developing into a fine defender. 15 metres from the Bulldogs. Ambrose again punches the ball to space. Holm runs onto it and is tidied up by two Port Adelaide Magpies players. Ball up situation now. It's a feature of Port Adelaide's play today where they've had the second person coming over the back of the boundary throw ins. Very consistent with that the whole day, so there is a plan there. The Springer. Port Adelaide have won 23 of the last uh, 27 head outs. They're dominating that area on the field. Hopwood back to Cotter. 55 out of high ball. Well, Ambrose did best, didn't he? Just back, back into it. Jew underneath it couldn't get it clear. Ambrose releases Bolton, running wide on the left boot. He just pushes it out wide. Now, uh, Burgoyne's got Schwert, if you don't mind. Now, Schwert is one of the best taggers in the business. But Burgoyne still gets away the handball to Tregenza. Around the corner he goes, forces it up for Binky. Morgan was uh, front position. McGowan to Hicks is good play. Now, they need to get it moving quickly into their forward zone. Who presents themselves as a blue on behind play, by the way, if you don't mind. And Ambrose, Rick McGowan and Binky. Well, you'd expect McGowan to be in it. He's done everything uh, trying to lift the Bulldogs today. Hicks, Chambers had the ball smothered by Brown. Now it's Hicks again. Good contest, Bowen Lockwood. But in doing so, he's given away a free kick to Tony Bamford. I'm just very interested to see if the ABC got any footage of that little blue behind play. Or Mr McGowan might be a touch embarrassed, I'd say. Well, it is a final, uh, Michael, and... Uh, yes. and they're needing emotion, and maybe he's looking for that spark. Bamford transfer play to Jared Poulton. Number 15 for the Magpies. Goes long with the right foot to half forward. The pack set themselves over the back. Brilliantly read by the tallest man on the ground in Jarks. Hasn't quite done the kick so brilliantly, though. Executed the kick, and it goes through for one behind. It's a little bit sad when you have the biggest man on the ground be able to run through. I don't know. I'll take all that back what I said about it. I just saw the elbow come up, but there was no real contact there, was there, David? Cotter it is with the football. Left foot to half forward for the Magpies. But out in front, Orman Allen, terrific spring, takes the easiest of chess marks. In front of Jew. 
numbers as Figet runs the ball along the outer wing, puts it to Harford, and it goes over the pack, clears Cassidy in a boundary throw in. You'd have to think, Michael, the uh, Centrals are going to come away from this game embarrassed by the lack of intensity and passion. It's just not there, is it? Especially lined up probably against the most intense and the most passionate team historically in the league. And it really is showing out today. Might get Ken Sheldon just to think about who are the passionate uh, central players. Forget their best. Just somebody playing with a bit of fire in the belly. I don't think uh, I can think of more than one or two. Put you, the, put you to the task there, Ken. Well, I've liked uh, Geister. He's tried hard at full back. I think Steinburner had a reasonable first quarter, was then put onto the half-back flank to Stenberg going, now put back onto the wing, I think. We'll have a good duel there. I like this fellow. He has a go, of course. Well, I think there's a number of them there, but they certainly haven't got a lot of mates. <laughs> Very good. At half-forward, pushes it into the uh, forward pocket. Binky took front position, almost completed the mark. Where was Bamford roving it, as he usually does? We are just on 18 minutes into the third quarter. The Premiership term for Port Adelaide, and they're doing it on the bit. And having Binky just supplying that competition in the air, getting his hands on the ball and bringing it forward, it's the reason that they're just getting so many shots on goal. The throw in 30 metres from the Port Adelaide Magpies goal. Attempted smash to the goal square by Jarks. Unsuccessful, the ball in at ground level there. Numbers, Cassily it was. Eventually home, left foot flick as far as Borlase. Borlase puts the ball towards Brown, comes to the front of the pack. Numbers there, tackles taking place from both teams. Messy, but can the ball be released? Can it be kept alive for the Port Adelaide Magpies? No, it's tidied up. And another ball up will take place, David. You just look at Central and uh, you know that they're getting clearly beaten at centre-half forward. They've got Rymers there now, but see, it's fair to say Brian Lees is controlling that position. Perhaps a player like Mark Jones who just runs around and runs and runs might be a... It's, a, it's, a, it's a worthy point, David, because if Brian Lees, he's got the body strength and he's got good hands and he's reasonably aerobic, if somebody just quicker than him to move him away from that point. Might even be Steinborner. They just need somebody to run him. Speak of the man. Away from the contest. See, what's happening? Rymers, they're just leading him to the big man contests. And uh, it's working beautifully for Port Adelaide as Binky marks just on 50. It's got over the top of you there, there, though. I think with that kick, Rymers had run 70 metres mm. to win possession, but the kick was where he'd run from. Like It was just a very poor kick and put Lees in the box seat. He then had the body strength and poised to take the mark. Binky kicks. It'll land in the goal square. Smith over the back, the ball does travel out of bounds. In the forward pocket for the Magpies, Jared Poulton in screen, run all the way down from the back pocket. We are taking a little bit away from Port Adelaide, who have been absolutely brilliant today. They have been very good. And it's just their ability to get the hand on the ball and harass and knock the ball forward. Steed in position, body over the ball, pushed off it. And again, gee, there's been a lot of this this quarter, but it's probably playing in the Magpies' favour. They have dominated these tap-outs and throw-ins all day. Their on-ballers are on top, therefore so is their scoreline, because their forwards are producing, particularly Burgoyne with four magical goals. Binky with three. So again, good defence. Pushes the ball towards the boundary. David Brown was the player. Appealing for the free kick. Hopwood in pursuit. Almost perhaps could have been given one there. The crowd was fairly keen for it. But the wet weather, the rain that we had at half time has really changed the nature of the game and closed it in a lot. 16 possessions to Brown, and we're just on 20 minutes into the third quarter. Morgan kicks one forward. Darren Smith thumps it down. Hahn, the Iceman, gathers it in, forces the ball forward. No one can take clean possession. Brown was in the thick of things again, but he had the ball afraid from his hands. We'll have another throw-in. Interesting to see if Port Adelaide used their springer, as Ken T Sheldon has termed it. Somebody coming over the back to give a hit out and clear the pack. Very good crowd building for the doubleheader at Football Park. Ball A's takes the ball out of the ruck. He came from behind, so it's a fair point. And another bounce. Well, it's a simple tactic if you can get away with it. All you need is your ruckman just to push your other ruckman under the play a little bit, under the flight of the ball a little bit, and someone with a bit of agility. Just takes clean possession of the football, either with quick hands or with the foot, can move it on 30 metres instantly. It's also up to the central district players to recognise what's going on. 
just stand between their man and where the contest is going to be. Don't let them take that line. Peter Burgoyne leaving the arena, probably due to the blood rule. I'd hardly think it would have been due to fall, Ken. <laughs> he has been absolutely fantastic today. It's a pleasure to pay your money to get in, see Peter Burgoyne play football. 12 kicks, three marks, five handballs, and four goals. Let's kick those four goals in the opening half, the fourth one coming in the opening minutes of this third quarter. Andrew Ops, the player coming on, number three. Not a bad replacement, is it? Age 34. Formerly of uh, the Magpies, then went to Melbourne, back this year for Port Adelaide. Good player, hasn't he been over it for more than a decade? Peter Bergwijn just has a little scratch on the right arm. That'll be bandaged up. They'll get him back straight on the field. We are 22 and a half minutes into the third quarter. 83 plays, 32. It's a 51-point ball game. Port Adelaide are back to their best. They've won their last two games in dominating style. And today, they have a blitz, a bulldog side with great passion, the, the Magpies, led by the skipper, Daryl Borlase. And Peter Burgoyne with four goals, Binky with three, and Bamford. Burgoyne with four, Binky with three, and Bamford with two. Not a bad return, is it? That one says the umpire's too high, it's a free kick. That's a correct decision there from the umpire. Again, though, the defensive intent of the Port Adelaide players was there, just incorrectly laid the tackle. McGowan pumps the ball along, but Colton it was who flicks it to Borlase an attempted shot at goal from 60. Doesn't quite make it. Darren Smith just unable to take the mark. And what would worry the other coaches most, I think, about Port Adelaide now is that you have Scott Hodges sitting on the sidelines today, and that is probably the only place on the ground. Scotty Cummings as well. Now, there's an interesting thought, David. I think I'd prefer Scott Hodges back in this place playing well, but that's probably the only place on the ground where they've struggled to dominate. Morgan off for Burgoyne, the ball in the forward pocket for Port Adelaide Magpies. McGowan still with the footy, it's still alive. Handballed 15, 20 metres to the boundary. And yet again, a throw-in will take place. How many have we had this quarter, Moggy? It has been going in and out very much. But again, you saw the, the slippery ball just limiting the skills of the Central District players there when they're under pressure. Ball was up in the air, couldn't get a clean possession to clear the danger zone. Darren Smith takes front position, tries to thump it towards the goal mount, missed the ball comprehensively. McGowan gets the handball out to Geister onto the right boot. It was a hurried kick into space. Here comes Tregenza and Steinberger. That's a good matchup. Ground claimed by Holm. Goes to ground, plows to the umpire Bamford in turn to Lees, one of Port Adelaide's best. No question about his game. Binky just uh, caught the ball on the half volley. Schwert tried to dispossess him, and now it's on for young and old. And a bounce. Again, you see the ability of Brian Binky just to come at the contest. This time it was on the bounce, but just kept the ball to the front of the pack, and Peter Burgoyne knew exactly where to go. That funny-shaped ball that we played with didn't bounce the right way that time, but everything was set up structurally 100% correct. Ruckman at it, Brown, a terrific smother. That was a good smother by Damien Hicks. Eyes only for the footy. Left-footed Brown, not able to clear. The ball, throw in 50 metres from the Magpies goal in front of the members. Ops taking the ruck. Taps to himself, Binky picks it up, left foot snap towards goal, unsuccessful out on the full free kick will take place. Jack Daniels, a recipient. Same tactic what we talked about before, where the ruckman are just walking the, the central district ruckman out of the way, allowing somebody to come across the back, grab the football. Brett and Daniel from the back pocket. Jakes brings it down. Alfie Steed dispossessed by Schwert. Schwert's been one of the battlers for uh, the Magpies today. Make no mistake about that. Steed again, just inside the line, gains five valuable metres. You'd have to admire Alfie Steed's second effort. Every time he gets near the ball, just grits those teeth, hits the deck, gets back up again, keeps running. So the, hard, the hardness of these youngsters, I think, such as Steed, such as Bamford, such as Clayton when he played so well a fortnight ago. Young players at Port Adelaide that just have so much promising future. Rim as it is, can't quite control the ball eventually. A poor defence, Darren Smith. Touched on the line. So close 
I was about to say that's very ordinary defensive play. And then there was a very good, desperate effort in the last line to stop the goal, but that was ordinary. Yes, McGowan was uh, extraordinary to get there. Hopwood forward underneath this one. Castle, couldn't get it. Tregenza gets through traffic. The handball came out. Obbs dispossessed. Swatala. No free kick to the umpire. Can he shelf? Call for it. Northeast paddles it forward in front of Duke. Great play, Paul. Around the corner to Lees. Rymers couldn't get there. Here comes Steinborner. Tries to crash through. Did well to keep the ball in front of him. Kept the play on the ball, which was in board. That's what he had to do. Steps from 50, delivers it up. And underneath this one, big fly, Lockwood. Couldn't complete it. Ambrose forced the ball forward. Lees another handball. Off to Brown. Possession number 18 for him and doing very well, if you don't mind. Bamford at left half-back. Bamford again, just further using the ball through possession-type football to Brown, who has just run on the overlap. Holding position now. Jared Poulton runs, creates space. Jarks, it is caught behind. Conway almost takes the mark. I'd love to see a Central District player take a clean position. Real handy when you're playing in finals. Sarcastic. That's a, fair, no, it's a fair point you made, though, isn't it? I know you've said it sarcastically, but to be fair, they have uh, second grab at most of the balls, and it is, has been frustrating. Swert transfers the ball. Conway on the position again, a missed opportunity. Remus picks it up, quick left hand ball to Conway, puts it forward. Figure, terrific defence, just going for the safety of the boundary. Can't quite make it this time. Ball transferred inboard, and again, a missed opportunity. Bamford it is. Now, Ken, to be fair, they've, they've missed the target then from five metres. I mean, you can understand it, a running under Unreal. pressure kick from 60, but missing a target from five metres is an unheard of. The confidence has been sapped out of the side. They really are. Burgoyne, watch him go. Conway has to run him down. Can't do so. Well, how far did he run? He got the handball off, but Geister was the one who got him. McGowan gets the handball forward. Brenton Daniel, one on one. Steedy got him. We will allow Burgoyne one mistake for the day. Drag him. <laughs> You're a heartless man, nah, David McCoy. He's just been terrific, Peter Burgoyne. And you couldn't fault him for taking them on because he's taken them all on all day, Peter Burgoyne, and blitzed a quality field and made them look, frankly, second rate. Tap down to Burgoyne, the player in mid. Left foot snap. Can he put this through? There he is, the magician. Look at that. Well, Arms in the air. <laughs> How good is that one of the Oh, mate. He made a mistake. We gave him one mistake for the day. A good player would say... I need to recover from that as Burgoyne has magically produced his fifth goal. Left foot on the boundary, on the run, under pressure. 13 goals, 12, <laughs> 90. Port Adelaide Magpies in control of the Central District Bulldogs, who have only five goals, two, 32 on the board at the 29 minute mark of this, the third quarter. 58 points the margin, that's what we come to see. Peter Burgoyne, magic. It is time to see Radley Moller unless he's injured, though. I think he might be because uh, he hasn't really been back to even play a minute. a minute after the first quarter. So we can only presume from that he's injured because they've certainly needed their big men out there. Lewis has struggled. Lockwood has uh, been completely outclassed today, which is rare because I think he's a quality young player. Now, that's not a bad bench to have either, is it? You've got Morgan, you've got Carter, and you've got um, Brett Chalmers sitting on the bench. Carter, I think, headed to the bench for disciplinary reasons. Yes. And with the way Port Adelaide are playing, he hasn't had an opportunity to get back on. Fair lesson there for the rest of the boys as well. That's the way they uh, like it at Port Adelaide, though. It's just the way it has to be. Hahn goes for the rest of the bunker, and Morgan comes back on. Just a speck of blood on the left cheek, I can think, the reason that uh, Hahn's sitting there. Nearing the end of this, the third quarter, Conway with a big tap to the advantage of Steinburner, who slips. Bamford, good hands up off ground level to the running Tregenza, has one bounce, looks upfield, uses the ball to space. Well done. Can Smith run onto it? Not quite. Now he eventually does. Turns back inboard. Gee, I've, uh, I've seen Nook turn quicker than that, David. <laughs> Here we go. Through the ball ace. It's effective though, Darren Smith set it up, brilliant play from Bamford at half-back, second goal to Orlais. Port Adelaide players just starting to run all over the top of Central Districts, and again the attack on the ball, 
from the turning milk, as Ken Sheldon has described it. The actual attack on the ball from Alfie Steed created the competition. Second effort again from Steed, got his hands on the ball, delivered the handball. Fantastic. I'm impressed with Alfie Steed's go at the ball. And Two. Tregenza, David, featuring. He's uh, played well. He must have been dead stiff not to uh, make it for the Crows. Ten kicks, 11 handballs to Tregenza and Darren Smith. Do you hope that he's going to settle up again next year? Because right at the end of the season when they've needed him, he's the man who's come to the fore and really given them something, hasn't he? Lee, comment Ken Sheldon. To Figgit, drops the ball. He's able to get out of the tackle. No, well done, Holm. Created the pressure, puts a shepherd on. Picked up here. And put deep into the forward line, looking for a bulldog mark, but outnumbered by the Magpies. Cook, as he should be, as a rover at the front of the pack, but well tackled by Figgit. Eventually over the boundary line. Good defence, good aggression. I think if you were Peter Jones at three-quarter time, you'd say, fellas, let's throw the game plan out. Grab the ball, run, 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 run. We're going to kick it long. I just want you to run it as quickly as you can and just throw it all at them. You'd like to think they could get close in the final quarter and attack something. Otherwise, you suspect that uh, he goes back into pre-season training, makes them look bigger and faster. He has to get them competitive because they've been out-muscled by a bigger, stronger side. But that's not coming from the physical competitiveness, Dave. That's just... The way they're going about it, from the shoulders up, is where the uh, where it needs to be addressed right now, I think. Well, the siren sounded, and Port Adelaide were very, very good in that quarter. They're 14, 12, 96 central, a 5-2, 32. It's a 64-point margin in favour of Port Adelaide at three-quarter time in this elimination final. You're watching all the action on ABC Sport. <laughs> Start of the last quarter here at Football Park. The elimination final, 1998. We see Port Adelaide, 14 goals, 12.96. They lead Centrals, five goals, 2.32. What can the Bulldogs do? Could be their last 30 minutes of football for this season. As we see the ball going for the Magpies today have been in charge. Brown quickly out to Dragenza. Dragenza sidestep, couldn't quite get around. Cassidy picks it up. All of a sudden, the Magpies have got numbers around the ball. Back to Cassidy again. Left leg down the line. Looking for the boundary line. Lees is there. Ambles up over the top. We knew which direction he was going, Michael Parsons. He's very consistent, isn't he, Brian Lees? Takes as many yards as he can. Meters, I guess I'm supposed to say. As many metres and heads for the safety of the boundary line. But he's played a fantastic game today at centre half back. Really has been a stopper for the Port Adelaide Football Club. As Blood rule by the looks. I can't see where the player's coming off. Just down in front of us. There it is. Mr. Hobbs. Hahn, it is the player coming onto the ground. Andrew Hobbs leaving through the blood rule. Final quarter here. The elimination final. Port Adelaide playing Central District. Port Adelaide in control. Throw in. The Ruckman jostle for position. Comes to the front to McGowan. In there was Orman Allen. Tidied it up, and another ball up takes place. 96 to 32, sunshine, beautiful conditions now. Strong wind blowing across the ground. Down to Lewis, great smother by Big Jacks. He's been terrific today. Brown up off the, <laughs> the deck is deemed a throw by the umpire. No, he's uh, getting a free kick for pushing the back. Uh, shall we say around the neck? Brown with a left foot kick. Spoil almost taken by Bamford. Out to Morgan. The ball ace who transfers it inland to Lees, who has really done that well. Coming down from centre half back. Not quite so good with a kick to Smith with the handball to Bamford. He's featured in four or five plays already this quarter, having a terrific game. Puts it through for a minor score. 14 13 now, the Magpies. I think, or if I beat the scoreboard. 14-12. Oh, there we are. It's a 5-2. You have to wonder about Simon Lewis' effort to run with Lees then. He just stood and watched. Cassidy, across the half-back line, looks downfield. Couldn't quite find Ball Ace. Ball Ace is over the top. He's back on it. That's Tregenza. Kicks it up and finds Steed. 
Alfie Steed. Right leg. It's towards Smith. He's in front. Just brings the ball to ground. The magical Burgoyne there again. Takes it. Gives it off. And the bagpies bring up another behind. So a little bit of... What would you say? Mike Parsons? <laughs> they just get a little bit casual with their approach towards goal in this last five minutes. Yeah, bad miss there. Easy opportunity to get the ball rolling again for the last quarter. Deister kicks it out to Swerve, who made a mess of that. The kick wasn't quite right on the half volley, and he's fumbled it out over the boundary line. The Ruckman racing to take the tap. Conway 33 for the Bulldogs. Jarks 43 for the Maggies. Jarks wrestles for front position. Done it easily, too, I might say. Puts the ball down, however, McGowan's in the slot. Harassed out of it by Morgan. Good hands, Rog. Oh, no, it wasn't. Swert coming to screen there from nowhere. Took the ball, left foot. Pumped it up to the centre wing. Stewie Jew controls the footy. Keeps his balance. Breaks the tackle. Turns on his left foot. Puts it. Lace out. Beautiful kick. Almost to the advantage. The Bulldogs picked up by Lewis. Back to Jew. The good hands. No, not quite. Gee, they're sloppy with their disposal today, the Bulldogs. Running onto the football. Cotter. Missed the body again. Picks it up. Lees intercepts Poulton, it is, who now in control, will be shepherded, trips over at the crucial stage. Cook, can he take clean position? No, he's tackled by Lees. Eventually, the ball's kicked to the front of the square, but Tregenza, who's playing so well on the outer wing, takes the mark and fixes it onto Ambrose. Ambrose kicks the ball to the safety of the boundary. And that forward thrust of Central District's broken down again because of Cook's inability to take the right-hand option. Ball to be thrown in. Daniel Jakes up against Mark Conway. Conway thumps the ball towards his way of goal. Didn't find any player in particular. Binky comes out. Two hands stretched out. Couldn't take the ball. Comes back again. This time it's Hicks. Just chips the ball forward. Lines number 41 in Chambers. Chambers goes shorter still. Across to Swert. What will Stephen Swert do? The player's moving. It's a good kick forward. Out comes Wakeland and takes it. So a good chest mark there by Michael Wakeland. After a lovely controlled kick there by Stephen Swert. And a good job by Daniel Holland too to clear the path for his leading full forward. Could have gone for the ball himself, took the intelligent option and just kept his man out of the contest. Michael Wakeland will kick from around about 48 to 45 metres. Virtually directly in front. Will make that distance with the wind just slightly over his right shoulder. It's a beautiful kick off the boot. And it's a goal. Michael Wakeland brings up another goal. That's his second for the afternoon. And I believe that would be Central District's first goal since sometime in the second quarter. He's kicking only one behind in the third quarter. Now registering their sixth goal. So a 60-point margin. Ten goals in favour of the Magpies. Kicking into the slight breeze. It's a fair breeze, but I think it's slightly favouring the Bulldogs. Is that a fair call, Mark? It's hard to say at Football Park. The flags at both ends, and, and both flags favour each other's ends. So you really can't say which way the wind is blowing out there. We must get out in our second game. We'll have our regular boundary lot rider, Mike Parsons, down there. No doubt will inform us. And Holm it is who took a good mark from a good kick forward by Cook. Steinburner now has run on into the space. Has a set shot. Should be able to take a leaf out of Michael Wakeland's book and repeat the dose. Bringing up the seventh goal for the Bulldogs. Steinburner. Good approach. Drops it well. Looked good off the boot. Beautiful kick. He is a lovely kick. He is a lovely kick. His second goal, and Dent's desperately needed goals from Central Districts. And it's important, Ken, I think, that Central Districts do have a good quarter here. Could be their last quarter of the year, almost definitely their last quarter of the year, just to carry something positive through the summer, through the long pre-season. They've got a couple of quick ones, and it'd be good to see them pick up and get a bit of a roll on, maybe even drag those scores a little closer together. Umpire about to bounce the ball in the centre of Footy Park. The elimination final. Final quarter. 
Jarks up, taps the ball brilliantly down to Elf Steed. Steed has played well today, puts the ball in the right slot to Darren Smith, but well done, guys, to big, strong fist. Daniel's in pursuit, Ops beats him. Should have been given a free kick, wasn't seen by the umpire. Well intercepted by the Bulldogs as they crash into the ball. McGowan with good hands to Conway, the big left foot. This should go long. It comes out four wide to Holm, who's pushed off it by Fiegert. They run towards the football. Chambers it is in the slot, but Fiegert ever so dour and just taps it to the safety of the boundary. Good percentage play, Nigel Fiegert, number 17 of Port Adelaide Magpies. The discipline of the Port Adelaide Football Club to head to the line. Just take the percentages, get the ball out of play, stop the run. It's just been so consistent the entire day. 54 point margin, the eight and a half minute mark this last quarter. Unfortunately, I have to say this, but I don't think Central Districts will be here next week. It's a very brave punt mark <laughs> at this time of the game. Ball be bounced. Conwood, Conway will tackle Jakes. Jakes backhandled it beautifully across the Fiegert. Fiegert kicks it up. Good courageous mark going backwards was Daniel. Daniel takes it, chips wide, looking for Steinberner. He's there, just toe pokes it forward. Gives him a chance to be able to run onto it. Now, will he get around Jared Paltney? He does that. Stein Lager on his way. The moving Wakeland's up there. He takes it around his body, over his left shoulder. A high kick will make the distance. I don't think so. Danny Holm going back. And the Magpie defence once again. They should clear it. They do. Good handball by Ambrose. Cross to Lees. Lee just dumped it onto his boot. Kicks it forward. Jake's the big fella. Takes it. Knocks it to the ground. Incoming coming into his offs. He keeps the ball in. Great work there by the Magpies. Connor comes and takes it. In there is the Iceman. Just flicks it out. Takes it again. Got the movement of Smith. A beautiful kick towards Smith. Should take this turn kick. He does. He can't quite get there. Needs support. Support. Burgoyne's there. And Central Districts just had enough numbers and a bit of luck will clear. Towards Cook almost takes the mark. It's deemed in the back interference. The umpire right in the slot there, only 10 metres from the play. Picked it up, the free kick to Steed. Steed with a low pass in the direction of Benke. Doesn't quite get him, it is at the front of the pack though, Trigenza. Just not quite using the ball effectively. And hop good it is. Take the mark at half back. Transfers the ball into centre of the play, due unattended. Runs under his left foot, uses the ball long to the leading forwards. Not quite able to get there. The big fellow Moller pushed off it by Ambrose and out of bounds, 40 metres around on the members' side flank here at Football Park. 40 metres from the Central District Bulldogs goals. Hang up, Mark. Moller and Ambrose will contest the ruck. Ambrose has played particularly well at fullback. Moller had a good, reasonable, I would say, first quarter. Was benched for a good part of the game, now back in. The They've been hard at it, Michael Port Adelaide, all day. You admire the way that they have attacked the ball, attacked the body, and they're just a consistent defensive pattern where they just get the ball towards the boundary line. If it's on the defensive side of the wing, get it out. If it's on the attacking side of the wing, bring it back in. Pretty simple game plan. It's been more than effective today. Umpire gain, gain blows the whistle. Comes in there as Morgan comes up. Coach Peter Jonas. I have to uh, sit down Monday and just go through. Johnny Platten there, along with Scotty Lee, a couple of co-captains in 1998. Would have loved to have been out there. Unfortunately, injuries got the better of both players throughout the season. Platten with his knee and also Scotty Lee. A slight stress fracture in his foot. Connor puts it on his way. Heads towards goal again. Trent Orman Allen comes across. Just glides across the front of the pack. Takes a superb grab. Beautiful timing. Brown will take this. He has plenty of space in front of him. He's got ops there. Should give it back to Brown. Or will he go on board to Binky? Just decides to turn, look forward himself. Smith couldn't quite take it. The ball will be cleared by Cassidy. Cassidy it is who spears a pass to Cotter. Cotter now in front of the members here. It's a ball long to the centre of the ground. Heading towards the half forward, Lures and Lees. 
Ops, good body work. Can't quite use it effectively though. McGowan, it is the recipient of the footy who makes a mess of that only as far as Brian Lees. And Lees again with the left foot, not able to find a teammate. Swatala off to Hicks. Hicks transfers the ball to Swartz. Swartz had a reasonable game, started at half back. It's the ball long in the centre half forward. But just dropping back in the slot brilliantly as he does so often, Nigel Figgett. Figgett transfers, play to ball ace. Ball ace played in the centre, had a good duel with McGowan. Uses the ball effectively to Brian Lees. Brian Lees been terrific at centre half back. On board to Carter. Carter can't quite control it. And a throw in. Right in front of the members in the commentary box here, Mark Naley. Yes, the, the game really has lost that desperation and the commitment that we've seen by both sides in the opening two quarters. Really just playing out time now. Centrals realising that the margin is a little bit too great to grab in the last 30 minutes of football for the season. For the sake of their pride, though, you would still like to see Central Districts get up, get a roll on, take some risks, just toss the handballs, get the long kicks going, and just see what will fall out the other side of that. Good bounce. Jackson Conway in there at Danny Hall with the brilliant Bergwijn this afternoon. Really has been the outstanding player. He's had five goals and instrumental in a couple as well. He has quieted down a little bit with Spitala moving back onto him. Mark. I'd also say that uh, Brian Lees is right up there as BOG in this one. Conway takes it under a fair bit of pressure there by Morgan. Burgoyne's there, just needs to put the ball out to the ice man. He does that across the mad dog, Morgan. Morgan puts it on his way, looking for Binky. Back there is Geister as well. Geister taken now. That's one player, I believe, that could at least hold his head a little bit higher this afternoon would be Paul Geister. He's had a great duel with, with Smith. Started with Chalmers. And now got Binky back there. And I would say he's beaten both those players. In yes. Smith and Chalmers. Chalmers sitting on the bench. We're looking at his stats this afternoon. He really hasn't had that, that much of the football, but really has defended. And done the things you expect from a fullback. The spoiling, the chasing, the harassing. And giving at least a contest every time the ball has come forward. Hotwood. Goes wide. Just trying to control the ball was due. He suckers the ball out of the contest. Figgett comes in. It's a little, got there a little bit too quickly. His boot caught hold of the football. And out of bounds on the fall. Ball out of bounds again on the half forward flank. Looks like a free kick has been paid. Central Districts now. An opportunity to put another score on the board. This goes into... Michael Wakeland can't take the mark. Comes back out. Steinburner with the footy. Evasive skills. Puts the ball long to the sweet spot on the footy ground. They fly high, but Carter, who just at the front and square of that pack, read it brilliantly and clears from defence for Port Adelaide Magpies. Picked up off the ground by Cassily. Puts it through to Cotter. Good body strength. Good shepherd by Hopgood. Puts the ball long to Moller, can't quite take it as McGowan crumbs and then is tidied up well by Richard Ambrose. Been impressed with Ambrose's game at fullback. We've seen him play a couple of games this year, Ken, where he's absolutely dominated. Played a ruck down at the Glove one day where he just took the game by the scruff of the neck. But since he's been moved back to the fullback position, he really has supplied some stability back there. Down, that's Moller quickly on the left leg, goes wide. Trent Orman Allen, the beautifully balanced Trent Orman Allen, takes it. Comes back, looks for Lees for another possession. In there also is Burgoyne. Good work there by Svitala just to keep the ball in the forward line. Burgoyne there, probably best on ground today. Five goals, four in the first half in the opening minutes of the third quarter. And then a silky, silky, silky goal on the left foot. Only had one possession this quarter, but I think really was able to do it when the damage on the board when it was needed. I've also been impressed, Michael Parsons, with Bamford's game. He has played well. He gets to the right spot, doesn't he, Ken? He gets to the front of the pack and can pick the ball off with good reflexes. The key defenders in Brian Lees and Richard Ambrose have been terrific. Tregenza, I think, has just got better as the game's gone on. And I've been also impressed with 
the two key forwards for Port Adelaide, namely Darren Smith, I thought was terrific in the first quarter, and Binky with three first half goals also had an excellent contribution. It's definitely the easier list to find the better players in though, Ken. I'm looking forward to you running through the other one. Well, I don't think you really, you know, McGowan has been there all about, as is Steinbrenner. They've played reasonable football along with Jew. Stewie Jew's had a few touches. And Stephen Swert, and I think that really would perhaps tidy them up. Like uh, I mentioned Geister before, just he's had, he's had two or three opponents this afternoon. His stats don't indicate he's had a great day, but he really has competed well. We see Carter take a good mark going to the ground. He's got ops moving forward, he wants to use him. He decides to stick to the grandstand side here at Football Park. Awkward kick has found Brown. Comes across the band, but across to the ice man. What will he do? He goes, he keeps to the team rules, heads towards centre half forward. Unfortunately, no one back there except for Heapwood. Cassily it is. Puts the ball out to Reimers. Huey Reimers uses the ball. And again, just, well, Swerk was able to make the most of it, but that ball just sat up in the air too much for my liking. Gave the opposition the opportunity to defend it. The point you make, Ken, is that the skill level of Central Districts isn't really as the same level as Port Adelaide today. We're just playing without confidence, I would suggest, and uh, confidence is a wonderful thing. All of a sudden, the handball start hitting the mark, the kicks are out in front, the talk is there, the, the language, the body language is there. It just starts to happen for you, but you know, they started so well too, the Bulldogs, but they just, then from that moment on, I'll bet the five minute mark, the Maggie's got on top, they just machine-like have ground this Bulldog side into the ground. Oh, look at this. Skills of Burgoyne into Morgan. Morgan's had a good game. Left foot pass in the direction of Binky. Uses his body well, keeps his feet, snaps it over the shoulder. Is it down? What a great goal. Terrific goal. The 15th for the Port Adelaide Magpies. And his fourth. A terrific effort. Brian Binky. Fabulous skills from Binky. So good in the air. But with that shorter stature we talked about before, to be able to recover. And there's a, on the replay the skill that set it up. Peter Burgoyne's pick-up, one-handed pick-up on the dead run is a fantastic skill in Australian football. Beautiful goal, Brian Benke. 15 goals, 14. Port Adelaide Magpies, 104. Lead the Central District side, 7 goals, 2, 44. Big scoreline. Really is a thumping here this afternoon. The ball's bounced back in the middle of the ground. Daniel Jakes has led for most of the day. Had a little bit of a... A rest there in the second quarter when Brett Chalmers came on. But we talk about best players as well. Jakes has taken all before him. Really has done well. Coming out was Heath Hopwood. Took on David Brown. Really got through with it. He hasn't. Comes back to Burgoyne. He wheezes his way through again. Umpire nearly did put his whistle to his mouth and indicate it was holding the ball as we saw Burgoyne go to ground. Maybe just trying to do a little bit too much now. It's Peter Burgoyne. Back to Steed. Steed chips the ball, lays out the Binky under a fair bit of pressure again by Geister. Geister cleans it up beautifully. Ah, oh, the smother was there. Just the indecision again by the Bulldogs has cost them dearly as we see the Iceman come in and put the ball on the chest of Ball Ace. Now Centrals really have. The discipline has gone out of their game. Ops comes in, walks into the goal, and I mean walks in and puts it through. Andrew Obstin screen. Been a great player over a long period of time, kicking his first goal for the afternoon. See that on replay, good smother. The ice man, as Mark Naley calls him. He's referring to Hahn Ice. And there we are, unattended, runs into the easiest of goals. 110 plays, 44. Port Adelaide will go into next week's first semi-final against the loser of West Adelaide and Norwood this afternoon. Steed around the corner, underneath this one. A mark taken by Swatala. Well, he uh, was set to showcase his talents today, but his first quarter he started in the forward pocket. Steinborner has uh, really had a difficult task today. When you go through the Central District side, this fellow really ignited them. Vines, Port Adelaide, got the Magpies going early along with Darren Smith and uh, Simon Dragenza. They were very important in kick-starting the Magpies today and they got off on the right foot and just kept going. 
Steinborn at a cook. Central District, you suggest, would have a look at a few of their uh, players over the summer. And the team structure, because today they have been very ordinary. Jew, 48, closes on the left boot. This is what he's good at, kicking goals. Finds his range, finds the accuracy, and puts through his second. That's well done, Stewie Jew. Tried hard all day, started on the flank, was going into the midfield on occasions. See here on replay. Used his body well, kept his feet, understood where the goals were, and was never going to miss that from the minute he turned around. His intent was the goals. It was terrific execution as he rode that one through for four points. Well, 60 point margin now here at Football Park. Well, Adelaide will advance the first semi final next weekend. The ball comes down again. In there is Steinburner, taken by Obst. Alfred Steed, they're one of the youngsters out here this afternoon, just acknowledging his teammates, David Brown around him, also Obst at the bottom of that pack. Also Simon Dugenza. Good bounce again, Jake's over the top, it's down to Swert. Swert is quickly onto his left leg, he kicks it forward. The backers lead, who really has been impassable this afternoon. Anything that's come near him is taken. Ambrose likely player of the finals. He really will play an important part playing across that back line. Back to Swert again. He hasn't stopped trying, Stephen Swert. And eventually Stewie Jew ends up with it. He's kicked two this afternoon so far, Stewie Jew. will line up for his third. 14 kicks. Three handles, so 17 possessions for Stuart Jew. Still seems, Ken, to be carrying a little bit of, what would you say, not say puffy fat. Or baby fat around him still. They, they tell me he likes his pies and pasties. Very thick, solid lad for his age. Stewie Jew puts it on its way. It's a lovely kick once again. He's love, love watching left leggers kick for goal. Really is a highly skilled player. That's an excellent finish. He'd be one of a handful, Ken, who's uh, played under 30 games that averages better than a goal a game. Very few rookies and young players have the ability to do that. It's extremely talented. 56 plays, 110. A shellacking for the Bulldogs today. They'll go home with their tails between their legs. Port Adelaide, uh, on today's form, looked like they could go all the way into the grand final on this type of form. But they've got some stiff opposition along the way. But Norwood did it in 1984. I just wonder whether the Magpies can do it in 1998. Carter at defence was Schwert who uh, punched the ball into the Bulldog forward line. Brian Lees uh, has set the tone for the Port Adelaide defence this afternoon. Done a great job. Along with Poulton and Fiegert, they've been impassable at uh, halfback. As the crowd building for the second match in today's doublehead of the qualifying final between Norwood and West Adelaide. A big crowd expected for that match. Obst, Tregenza, Lees. He loves the big occasion, the big stage, and he doesn't let supporters down. So does this man, Darren Smith, who really kick-started the Port Adelaide forward line in the first quarter. And so too this man, Peter Burgoyne, whose five goals have blitzed the Bulldogs almost single-handedly. Good build-up from the Magpies. From half back, they've just handled the ball all the way through to an eventual score, only a minor. But they did control the football all the way. Paul Geister to bring the ball back in. Looks down the middle of the ground and then decides to go out towards the old scoreboard. The ball was touched, so it will be thrown back in. Just looking through the Bulldogs side, like Steinburn has had a reasonable day, as has Stewie Jew. Wakeland, a couple of goals, starved of opportunity. Squirt has tried hard all day. Cassidy also has tried hard all day. Yeah, it's a team game, Ken, isn't it? And I'm not sure that you can put too many others in that would uh, be able to look themselves, put themselves in the mirror, straight in the eye, look at their teammates, look at their coach. I don't know. That... Port Adelaide, you'd suggest, would be one of those days when you say all played well. Well, I've just started to write out the best players from Port Adelaide, and I stopped at 14. <laughs> <laughs> I think even paper. really the last eight have played their hand at times, haven't they? They've all put in a contribution. A great uh, club, a great record in finals, uh, Port Adelaide. 
But I think uh, Port Adelaide have played in, what, 175 finals and 196. Not a bad ratio when you played that many for 34 flags. And you can see why they are respected. The form uh, a month ago was atrocious. And then suddenly out of the blocks, they've won their last two, now their last three, and looking like the type of form that could take them to another premiership. Castley had the ball thumped away. Vines, who was very good early, to Morgan, who's found plenty of the hard ball for Port Adelaide. Going forward, uh, Burgoyne skirts the issue. He's already kicked five. There's a nice bit of finish. Make that six. Peter Burgoyne gets his sixth. A exclamation mark on an extraordinary performance this afternoon. And I think the trip to the hairdresser, Ken, hasn't hurt him at all. And I'm really glad that he didn't handball that ball off. Like, five goals is a great effort, but six, that's pretty special, I think, in a final. You can see here, he's crumbed it so well, broken through the tackle. Could have handballed it on, but done the right thing, I think, there, and finished it beautifully. Six goals to Peter Burgoyne in just what can only 20 year be old. described as an exceptional performance. Yeah, it's a big future in AFL football for Peter Burgoyne. Back here. Jakes takes it uncontested again. Coming through hard there was Brian Lees. Peter Ops is over the top, but not Peter. Actually, he's not Peter. So That's the going back a few years. So the final siren sounds. Port Adelaide go into next week's first semi-final against the loser of West Adelaide and Norwood. They've defeated Central. The Bulldogs' year is over, pitifully so. The Bulldogs, nine goals, two. Port Adelaide, 17 goals, 15. 117. You've enjoyed all the finals action on ABC Sport.